enough confidence in the things that I know I have enough wisdom to see the logic will be shown I got one chance to show you what I got I got one chance to show I'm confident or not Self-evident reason And conclusions And the fools are running away It's not what you say It's only what you can prove You better watch your step You better mind your things and cues You got one chance Show me what you Got one chance to show you confident or not. Don't get caught in a matrix of all of these fakers. Society spinning, and I'm just here living on the ground. Record us being giddy about George coming around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> record us discussing how we're going to right. bait him to come so in. How we can get George into the chat? That's it's got to be Bev. Uh, Be-, like George. he's got this thing with Bev. It's got to be Bev. It's got to be Bev. It's got to be Bev. He like can't help himself but correct Bev, right? Yeah, so tell him, <laughs> tell him something like I'm, I'm just having me tea at the minute. Does he want to come in and have a chat with you lot? Or you know, like just do you want to get him in here, right? Mission one. Want to make him wait? Get George in here. Well, I'll go quiet for a bit. And we'll just pretend that you know. There you go. Thanks. What? Thanks. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, just for letting him in. What? Somebody, somebody, oh, tell him I'm, I'm, I'm just not around just at the minute. Oh, he's thinking sugar, sugar, sugar cookie. Sugar I cookie. Think he blocked everyone here. <laughs> no, sugar cookie. You, you, uh, but do your buddy buddy thing with him. Oh, I think they have me blocked. Yeah. I'll try. Uh, okay. Let me see if I can give him a thumbs up or something. Nope. Reaction blocked. Oh, uh, never mind. Yeah, I'm blocked too. Yeah, but he can still, he probably still opens them up and reads them. Yeah, can you put an emoji on his uh, post? I cannot. No. no. I can, I can thumbs up it after somebody else already has, though. I yeah. thumbs up it. Oh, so Buster, yeah. Buster can. I oh, can't even you. thumbs oh, up the thumbs up. Oh, shit. It won't let me oh. thumbs up it even. I was uh, able to thumbs up him, so I guess need, he doesn't have me blocked. We need but... to get him in. Come on, lure him in, guys. What can I say to him? Because I don't think he's got me blocked. And say, I don't know. It, is is it important, right? You're gonna have to ask him, right? You know, what's it about, right? Even though he tells you, Go just on. keep asking <laughs> what it is, and then he'll have to come in here and explain it. 
Oh no! Don't mention Khan. Why? It's because that's what he Mike, Mike Mike it. wanted to worried about it. No, too late. You spread it by now. <laughs> there you go. Spot. I say spot on's the differential expert. Right, get him in here. Shit, they just had a train crash near me. Oh, shit. Oh, bad. A double train crash, meaning... Um, Two trains ran into each other. Yeah, just outside Salisbury on the Andover line. That's nearer me than it is you. Salisbury's <laughs> 20 minutes away, you donut. <laughs> Yeah, it was only 20 minutes away from me. <laughs> no, it's not. Actually, I did it at 19 last time we went out. Yeah. All right. Then. Whatever. You're going downhill, though, so you're all right. No, it's uphill from him. It's downhill <laughs> Shut from up. you. Shush. Shush. Do you know, that, that's, that's how I... Um... No, I'm not going to say that. And it's actually, it's actually in Wiltshire, so... Fuck off. Can we all like George's post, please? We no, no. To make him feel happy. <laughs> no, I don't yeah, like George. Five thumbs up already. You won't let me. Go away, George. Block me. So, can somebody ask George why, why Sugar Cookie can't <laughs> like his post? <laughs> bombarding too much. Yeah, he's gonna go. Oh my god, there's like ten people asking me questions. <laughs> yeah, but irrelevant questions, right? Mm -hmm. but just ask him why sugar cookie. You know, like what's so, so offensive? Like why is that? Is that's really nasty? That George sugar. Everyone likes sugar cookie. <laughs> what don't you like about sugar cookie, George? <laughs> <laughs> when, like, what did you what? say to him last time? Me? What was it? it, it the, the auto level, come on, spot on. You can get in. What? Like, say, you want me to put something? I know a bit. You're going to keep flooding him. He ain't going to fucking come in with you, lot old pestering him. you got to be cool with him, aren't you? Ooh, new house. He's not coming in, he's a chicken. Well, you know, I think we like went a bit overboard with the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he loves it. And he likes that. There's not too many thumbs up. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Boom. Oh, I Come can't on. thumbs there up you it. Go. No. You won't let me thumbs up. It's going up. It's going up. It's going up. Come on. Didn't get high on five. That's got to be high a high record. Five. I am not participating in this. Oh, I, I, I won't. Um, I can't. <laughs> oh, poor you. You've been blocked. Yes. There's, a, there's oh. one of the top presentations with the top guys to do presentations here. He's not. He's been a while since he did it. Yeah, good, because they're so like, fucking boring. He can get it out of the way before he moves out. I mean, he'll be busy in the next 10 days. Or, well, put, in 10 who, days when he's moving. Who put a sh shit emoji on there? It's not a shit emoji. Oh, so isn't it? No. Oh, right. That's my eyes thing. <laughs> <laughs> the tripod. I don't know the difference between shit and a compass. Okay. It's a tripod, isn't it? Or is it a compass? I can't even see. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can't either. It was only because Bev said it was a compass. Put my glasses on. Right, um, be, bearing in mind, I'm looking on my iPad too. Small <laughs> screen. Actually, that I think about it. Like, that's probably no, it's why definitely not a tripod. Come on, spot on. You get ask him what he wants. What? Go on, Emma. You get out there. I know. I know about Bev's auto. Are you? I don't want to talk to George. You? Say, I've used Why Bev's auto level, that? George. What is it you want to know about it? As though we've got it all on record somewhere. He's not coming in. There's no point. Seriously. There's no way he's coming in. <laughs> Blue marble. <laughs> Come on. 
He won't come in either. None of them will. They like to come in, moan in the chat, and then off they run. I'll try to say Bless something. You. So he'll correct me. I've got a video because I remember ages ago I went on McToon and he said that the auto level was shit so the day after I called up the company <laughs> to have a conversation with them about it and I've got that I've got that video If I drop that clip, do you reckon he'll run away? Mm, put it in there. He's not coming in, DP. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm the troll, so if anybody's going to drop it, it's going to be me. George Bait. That's rubbish if people don't have a server in common, they can't communicate. Yeah, it's total bullshit. Yeah, yeah, send it to him, Mobius. You want to entice him in for doing this presentation? Just drop it in the chat, Mobius. <laughs> Bev is also very rich. He's sure of it. <laughs> Tells me nothing. <laughs> Bev's all is very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. M more accurate than you and within, your techniques. Within the three tenths required. Yeah, oh. <laughs> three tenths of a margin. <laughs> Three that tenths of the fierce. surface of the water mm. level. <laughs> yeah, on a hundred meters, bang on. Within three tenths. Well, even even George has said it's the crosshair is um, more than the deviance that would be expected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he knows that. Mm. I feel that. Huh? Mm -hmm. But you can measure to one arc second <coughs> using a two arc second line. <laughs> <laughs> when it blurs uh, out enough, you can make it thin somehow by messing your cross about with the thing. <laughs> your crosshair is what, like a metre wide? Accurate within a meter. You need to have like a temp mod thing where you can roll him up with a temp mod. <laughs> Just make him feel like he's important. <laughs> What's the what question forward slash forward popular. slash? What's that code? Is that somebody else taking over for George? Mm -hmm. Why would George be putting two forward slashes after a question? Mark, and not putting a capital W at the beginning. Somebody else has took over for George there. It's a different person on the keyboard. <laughs> Get out. Okay, that's a tell. <laughs> I'm not going to give him the, uh, it's a datum auto level, isn't it? It's on the website. I know, but I hope you don't mind me playing along. Yeah, just have a go. Yeah, because I'm coming from a different angle to use lot, so. 
And he's never spoke to me, so happy days. He, he doesn't have any. He set fire to them all, remember? <laughs> yeah. It's, <right. laughs> it's offensive. Yeah. You know, uh, the bollocking I got from Rumpus for mentioning that he did have some tools, but they're all burnt, and he told us about that. <laughs> no, I missed that one. It struck an oblect. Oh, no fucking way. Was that due to all the flooding down there at the moment? It hit a struck an oblect in Fisherton Tunnel. It sounds like <laughs> an oblect. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it was like a quick, quick release, but it was um, it usually as quick. That's, it was like a that's... train. A train hit something. An oblect. Whatever, oh, an object. It was quick. Yeah, it, it derailed, and then. Another train came, hit that, and derailed. Yeah. That Two trains been... hit an oblect? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one train hit one the oblect. Hit an oblect. <laughs> and it and must, another... have gone over to the, must have gone over <laughs> into the other side. Yeah. And then the so other that... train coming on the other side hit the oblect, which was so the train. That <laughs> make it a deflected oblect? <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea, but it's it's what the oblect. hell? Did it hit That's it like my kind of angle. luck. Yeah. Did it hit at an obtuse angle? No. <laughs> oblique. Oh. <laughs> oblique, oblique. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Luckily, that's not a train line I take very often. So How often do you go on the train? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get in the car. Randy, you don't Randy. have to put the bus in. Well, yeah. On. No, but even then, when I did go on the train, I never went Salisbury way. That's not good though. There's air ambulances and everything. What it's in the tunnel? It's been, it's been <clears throat> fuck off you twat. It's been declared a major incident. Probably be another excuse as to why no one can see a doctor. It's in known for another it? two weeks, huh? It's in known if they are injured. I <laughs> know, in known. <laughs> <laughs> Please do a spell check before you send shit. But yeah, all the um, like the local forces that I follow on Twitter, yeah, they're all all responding. So if you want to go and burgle anything in my county, now is the time. Actually, that gives me a good idea. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> Trick or treating. Pick me up a laptop. I love the Werther's Wilder, Originals. What, the ones that have been in some old biddy's cupboard for ten years? Yeah, you can have them. No, 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 I meant on the trick and treat. Uh oh, you know George Tyson. He's been big typing this. Oh, here we go. He wants to come in. He oh. does. Were. See, he's put were. were. <laughs> yeah. oh. Only the oh, ATG2 survived oh. the fire. Wow. What's the ATG2? <clears throat> the top con, the total station. G3. Oh no, the top con GTS the field light. Three B. It was a two B, mm. wasn't it? The GTS two B. GTS Grain no, Game I One. <coughs> oh, I no, said three B because I, I looked it up. I was joking. Oh, well, I, was it? Because I was joking about the three, thinking he'd said two. So no, I put it. I put it in there, and, and it came up. I thought it. Well, he might have said two B, but I put in three B, and it came up as like used equipment. Auto levels, what? 
So he's got, he had three auto levels. One of them survived the fire, that and his Top Con GTS, because that was his personal favourite. He talks quite highly of the Top Con GTS 3 bit. How can, mm-hmm. how can uh, one do a better job of setting a horizontal than any of the others? It's easier to keep calibrated. Uh-huh. He said they never go out of calibration generally. He says so you, well, you, you can calibrate them. it on the fly. Like you just flip mm. it over. Just them. You just adjust them. Yeah, you yeah. just flip it over. Like you look at it one way and you flip it over and you look at it the other way and look at the other way and then says, it. it's done. No no no, it does it all itself. It's a full auto. <laughs> <laughs> George can't take that. George's brain will be fucking mashed trying to read all of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody show some fucking keenness about his tools. Will ya? No, I'm, I'm George. I'm not going to show there. keenness in George's tools. <laughs> right, Chief Bev, if you want to do it, go ahead. I can't, I'm doing it, I'm can't trying. Come back, he's going to... He'll ask me what the question he wants to ask me and get it over and done with. We need to... Uh, like he's he's an old man. He wants a bit of wooing, right? You've got you've got to try. Mike, Mike, change your name. Ch- just change your name for a bit, quick, before George sees you. Yeah. Yeah, Dave he's Smith. definitely not going to come if he Smith or something like that. Yeah. Hold on, I'll change it. <laughs> That way you can yeah. get to talk to him as well. Like, if he does come in here, like, you just carry on as normal. See whether George notices. <laughs> but they sound nice, though. I like that. They sound cool. Especially the GTS one. Is it in red? <laughs> I bet it's red, isn't it? Oh, Mobius, can Mobius like take a like a snippet of the screenshot that he had, like post a little bit of it or something? Like maybe just clip the like equation. Let me see. I, ah, I hate to post it because he did it in a DM. He was meant to be doing that um, double rod in money. Uh, Mobius, like, zoom in on the equation where it says, like, M plus A plus B minus A plus minus C. And say, hey, man, you think you could help me out with this? I wonder whether he can help us out with the... Uh... Jeremy. Let's get him to come in here. He's always treated well here. I I can't understand why he thinks he's been mistreated here. Like, we babied him for, like, three visits. I'm going to find the Zanic trick. See if I can lure him in. Like he, he, yeah. he'll, he'll love to fucking tell us we're wrong on the trigonometry one, won't he? If he spots it. <laughs> Let me 
might just get another picture as well just to throw it up there as if like, like they're different puzzles that we send out mm, there you go that one so there you go so you throw him one and then ask him can he solve it just to distract so you see what he does just wait <laughs> he's gonna process this stuff where's that formula we did the other day Bev uh, I've got that here as well I'll just stick that one in there That one. <laughs> oh, don't don't take the one that I took the time to make look nice and everything. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I don't know where that one is. I don't want to tempt him in too much, like we've done a meme of anything. This is just random shit to lure George in, right? He's now looking at that, thinking. What the fuck's that? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly what we were thinking when we were putting it together. <laughs> is that like another one of their logic things? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's the little three on the outside of the bracket? Cubed. Yeah, okay. We're going to have to work this one out. Now. Oh, look, he's he's typing. Wonder what which ones he going to pick. <laughs> Throw out three. He's got to bite on one of them. George, I'm betting on the trig. He wants to. I know he does. Old man sitting there. Yeah. He wants to spout his go. bullshit. Ah. One. Yeah, that's that. Can you solve this? He didn't go for the the trig because he doesn't understand the trig. <laughs> yeah. He just showed that. <clears throat> Good job, George. Yeah, well done. I'd give him a thumbs up, but I can't. Yeah, uh, I'll do it this way. Look. There we go. Where are we supposed to clap because George knows PEMDAS? Yeah, yeah. He can just do, <laughs> do simple maths. <laughs> Ask him about the trig. So did he? Does it? Is it because he didn't? Yeah, yeah. So why did he leave the trig alone? Is it because he doesn't understand it? <laughs> Better accuracy. More accurate, John. Go on. <laughs> He won't see it because he has me. He has me blocked, so he, he won't even see it, anything that I post. Is he not going to bite? People don't bite on the trick. It's just something that people claim other people don't understand but they leave most people want to just leave it step aside I, I, yeah okay i don't really get it i 
And it's definitely not going anywhere near the uh, accuracy calculations for Sean G. Oh, can we can we zoom can we zoom in on the picture? Mo Mobius has to do it. Mobius, you got to take a snippet and ask a question about it. Oh. It's not here, Mike. There we go. Look at that. So he had an uncertainty. <laughs> no, it's more accurate. That's what we got told the other day. One, if you say one, it could be 1.4. You know, or or point six could be anywhere. It implies more accuracy. <laughs> we we we've learnt from them that they did this to us the other week. <laughs> One equals plus or minus point five. This necessarily means that one point zero 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 must be more accurate than one with the uh, with the rounding up figures. Well as it suits me, yes. <laughs> By blue. <laughs> by blue George Mobius go on get in there by blue it's blue that told us the accuracy thing you had it out with him over on his server I can remember that that's definitely there The longer we can mess with him in the text chat. Let's hope Mobius can wrangle him in. This coffee house. play movies. Let's see whether see whether we can get the Brenda Brenda and Jeff see how good the affiliation is there with George. <laughs> He's biting. Oh, yeah. Not hook. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come on. Boom, boom.
Oh, just give him that thing. Just, can't just be one graphic, surely. Come on. S- send him, send him that little snippet, Mobius. Take like one snippet out of it. And send it in there and say, if, "I just have a question about this part." Everybody, thumbs up, Mobius's last comment. Oh, nice play. He's unblocked me because I can thumbs up it now. Six. Oh, yeah, me too. Whoa. Oh, no, that's Mobius. That's why. Mobius hasn't got me blocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, oh, unless you... Yeah, you're right. Well, that's why we want you to come in, George, because we don't know what you were thinking. Where does it say about the thinking? What's that? What? <laughs> oh, he's dying to do it. Mm-hmm. He's he's like he wants to do it so bad. Got a young whippersnapper who wants to know about his presentation. Yeah. But it would it would help Rumpus. Like give him you need to give him some more incentives, Mobius. We know you're keen on watching it. You're keen, right? And he could give his knowledge to you. But what's in it for him, right? How else can he help people? Ooh. Nicely done. Ooh. Five Five minutes. minutes. Preparation time. Right. Oh. Countdown. Five minutes of counting. Yeah, yeah. He's going to be gargling his uh, antiseptic. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. Put on your seatbelt. No more. <laughs> Pre shave, maybe. <laughs> Just appreciate. <laughs> well done, Mobius. Round of applause, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Slow clap. Yep. Yeah. We give you the the award of the George Wrangler for the evening of Sunday for this week. I wonder if he's calling Rumpus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just checking it with the council. Mm. Am I all right? They said they'll stay on mute. And he's unaffiliated with the Geo crowd. But I have thought of for quite a while that the Rumpus and George crew are a different group. Mm. Sorry, I was walking around. I, I had to stay on mute. <laughs> but I was listening to you guys.
I mean, it is kind of fun talking shit just to each other for me here <laughs> in text chat. <laughs> George meant that <clears throat> he thinks it's dangerous to share that diagram with anybody. <laughs> what are the chances anyone knows what I was thinking? Well, that's the whole point of getting him in here so we know what he's thinking when he wrote that shit out. Right. He's not too much longer. I got shit to do. <laughs> Isn't that armor? Yeah, I remember when he was doing that shit? Mm hmm. I think I just screenshotted it. And <laughs> Five minute presentation. Man, if if we can get that him to do that diagram that he drew up and it go th walk through it, it'd be glorious. I just all the only thing I'm concerned about is that one measure and rod that's in the divot. divot. <laughs> Why put it in the hole? Why well, said in a divot? Did yeah. you dig that out? <laughs> why'd you, yeah, why'd you dig a divot? <laughs> I think that's representative of that bit. Was there a trough in there or something? Uh, it must have been a canal. A drainage ditch. <laughs> that diagram is like the be all end all. George is fixing to do it. He's fixing to do it for all of the Globers. He's gonna. This one's for Zanuck. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the shout out to Zanuck for this one. Perpendicular to plumb at a point. Yeah. Differential leveling. Yeah, stay away, Jesse. Stay away, Jeff. You're not yep, needed. don't need you. George has got this covered. Yep. Oh, it's not in Christ again, has it? Oh, no. The millimeters or inches or whatever with a given distance that you're shooting out can't be from, from your auto level. As you use that video. angular measurement, you multiply by the distance to the target, and that tells you the amount of uncertainty in your vertical measurement. So for example, if you have a one arc second auto level at 100 meters, you can expect an uncertainty of about a half a millimeter. That's what one arc second works out to. You'll have an, uh, an uncertainty in your vertical measurement on your measuring rod or whatever of a half a millimeter. You, you, can't, you can't, even though you could read it to better than that possibly, but you can't say for certain that that is what it actually is. With a perfect auto level, with no inaccuracies, yeah, what you read on your story poll is what you're getting. But every instrument has a certain amount of uncertainty associated with it. So with a one arc second auto level, the best you can say is say you read um, uh, 12.6 millimeters on your story poll, but you can 
you can't say it's actually 12.6. It's 12.6 plus or minus a half a millimeter because the auto level will not allow you to, um, it, it has an uncertainty of one arc second, which works George, out at 100 meters You've been to going be on a half a millimeter. George, I don't want to interrupt. You've been going on for, yeah. for two minutes. Please conclude and, and let him respond, please, George. I just did. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. Okay, bad timing for me. All right. Okay, well, I'll say again, it's, it, uh, an auto level just doesn't measure vertical angles. So <sighs> I, I know, didn't it's, say it's it did. Well, I'm, I'm saying as well, if you get the most accurate auto levels, then they read to 0 0.01 of a millimetre. Well, that reads to point zero one of a millimetre. No mention of angular measurements or anything. But that, that's a meaningless number. At what point distance? Zero one of a millimetre is a definite But at number. what distance? At, at what distance? At 30 metres. I don't know like, whether I've said that loads of times. If you want to no, keep the most accurate you can, you come down to 30, 40 metres maximum and you fit a micrometer to a precision level. Very costly shit. But you can do that. What's the numbers you have now? Point what? Point zero one millimeter? I, I put it in there before. No, oh, just give me the numbers. Just tell me what what are you claiming? A precision level measures to point zero one of a millimeter. Okay. At thirty meters, you're saying. Yes. Is it it's gonna be a problem for you, I know, George, because you're gonna do some calculations and say, Oh, you can't. But I mean it's not me. No, you right can't. Us. These are the tools. You can't. You can't. No, not with a one arc second. It's not arc seconds. Yes, it is. Levels look, do not look at your auto. Do you have a man? Do you have a manual? Words. Do you have a manual? Do you have a manual for your auto level? Look yeah. at the accuracy setting of the compensator. The setting accuracy of your compensator. See how it's rated. Dig out your manual. Just have a look for yourself. It's a big, uh, it's a big job, isn't it? Preparing. Oh, welcome, George. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you, George. Hi there, Bill. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I've just got back. George, Mobius was saying something about you. Uh, you've got a presentation for him. He's, he's been asking. Well, I don't know. He uh, he wanted me to uh, talk about differential leveling. I don't really care to, but. Uh, I did give him uh, some information yesterday. I I don't know it. Uh, it's not really necessary. Do you not know that much about it? No, I didn't say that. Oh. I mean, do you, I mean I I I can talk about it, but. Uh, is it going to be really of any value? You you seem to say you you understand differential leveling. Uh, you can tell them. Mobius was asking you though. Mobius is what? He's a curious young lad. He wants to get as much. He, he wants to gain as much information about everything as he can. All right. Is he here? Oh yeah, he's there. Uh, yeah, I think he's around. I think he just popped away for a minute. I uh, did ask you, uh, Bev, I wanted to know uh, what, what is the uh, make and model of your uh, auto level? 
Dayton. What? Dayton? Yeah. D-A-T-U-M? Yep. And what model? AL32. AL32, okay. There's a, <clears throat> thing, there's a link on the website. Which website? <laughs> Which website? You said on the website. What yeah. website? The on the level website. Sorry, I was I was on mute. Um, I didn't want to like interfere too much in BC. So there's no interference. What what is it that? Uh... Well, I, I was just hoping that maybe you could go over. The, some of the stuff that we were going over in text in DMs because mm -hmm. I still have some questions and, and I figure if you, you know if you explain it All right. to other people then they can maybe get a better grasp on it than yeah. I would well that's up to Bev this is uh, his deal yeah I think we were all in agreement that you could go ahead and do like you know present what what you had presented in DMs with me and everybody would stay on mute and just let you kind of have the show. Is there, um, it would be better if I could live present so that I can uh, manipulate the graphics around a little bit rather than keep posting it and, and having to change it and then posting it. Can you not do that I already, think... George? Is it not got the video in the screen at the bottom, at the bottom of the screen? Butter. where can you not um do that well i suppose i could i mean if you're with your permission yeah if it's if it's on the screen there then yeah you can like if it's there you should okay have hang on it, all right so. yeah like either a live stream or share your screen yeah, you however you want to do it i think oh yeah there you go perfect all right, I'll, I'll go back on mute. Oh, holy crap. Hi, George. I've only got, I've got spinny blobs, though. Okie dokie. Yeah, it's just a spinny. No yeah. pictures coming up. It's up for me. I can it, see it. Is it? You it's can. The, yeah, I, the, I can't see it either. It's the, no, no, it's the first bit. It's the two green lines. It was working. It wasn't for us. Monster, it was not. Yeah. I, I swear. I, I Why well, did you say it? Maybe, maybe, George, you could try that again. Did he leave? Yeah. He's, yeah. Oh, no, I swear. I could I could see what he put up. I was looking at it. Oh. Say so what? Is there a problem? May, no. Well, maybe you could do it again. I, yeah. I wasn't able to see it, but Buster says that he was able to see it. Yeah, so. I, I couldn't see it. You can't see it. No, I, I wasn't able to before, but Buster said that he was able to. So Did maybe it, yeah, it I kick you out as well, then, George, because you, you're not sharing it anymore. Huh. I don't know what happened. Yeah. It's gone. Huh. Okay, let me try again. <laughs> it looked, the screen went it off. Like, I'm sorry. It looked like you had it sectioned out, and like I could see the first bit. It was like two. Well, I don't know. For some reason, it kicked me off. Are we there again? There we go. Let's see. You see it now? Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, there it is. Perfect. All right, I'll go on. Okay. Here. I don't know. For some reason, it uh, uh, it canceled me out. Okay. Well, we'll try this again. Good. <laughs> this looks good. All what right. is this? <clears throat> That's so, good. Okay, so what we have, the green, are our two uh, uh, rods or our... Um, grading poles you know that will have marks on it you know and in the uk i don't know what you uh use for graduations there are maybe five millimeters uh what are your grading poles marked at uh in res in res finest resolution belt on the backs of them you get millimeter on the back but um if you're after really accurate stuff you got millimeters on the back oh 
So it, they will grade it down to a millimeter, huh? Yeah, but really close. You know, you have to do yeah. that. That's, yeah. Right, right. Got of course. Centimeter. Yeah, in the U.S. Centimeter or half centimeter. Yeah. In the U.S., they're generally marked in hundreds of a foot, which is about an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. So, okay. So these are our two uh, grading rods in green. The auto level is the blue in the center here. And in differential leveling is the best way to do it. The easiest way is you set your auto level midway between the two poles. You don't have to for differential leveling, but by putting it symmetrically between the two poles, the curvature of the earth drops out and you also end up minimizing refractive effects. And I'll tell you why that's going to happen here in a bit. So you have your auto level set up, and now you can spin the scope around. You can shoot in this direction to the left, which we call the back sight, or spin it 180 degrees and shoot in the forward direction, which we call the foresight. Now, with the auto level uh, set up and the compensator moving freely, you shoot a straight line, and you are guaranteed when you look through the scope of the auto level on the back site to the left pole and, and read the mark or put a mark there and then rotate and go around to the foresight and read your mark on the pole, that these two marks that the auto level is setting, sighting are at the same elevation or at the same level. Level and elevation, if things are at the same elevation, they're also on the same level, that if you connected, uh, say, a continuous line all at the same level uh, or at the same elevation. You put water in the trough, the water is just going to sit there. It's not going to flow. That's what we mean by the same elevation or the same level. But you are guaranteed, even if the auto level is out of adjustment, that if you sight a foresight and a backsight on the pole, that these marks will be at the same elevation. You're always guaranteed that with the auto level. Now, what I'm showing here is in black is, let's say this is our ground. Have a little, uh, say, depression here, a little well. Uh, but this is our ground level. Now, the little, the thin green line is a level line that's just above the ground. And <clears throat> this would be, say, if you laid a hose along there, I know this is going to bother you because it's curved, but this is a level line on the earth that if, say, this were a hose and you filled it with water, the water would just sit in the hose. It would not flow. Even though you think it's on a hill or whatever, that's not the way it works on the earth. But, um, and <clears throat> what you have when you shoot these two marks on your pole, if I were to say, um, <clears throat> see, measure the distance shown in yellow from where the auto level is sighting on the pole to a level line on the ground. And I look on this one too. The distances are guaranteed to be the same, even though the earth curves away from the auto level in both directions. The fact that the auto level is in the middle, we get the same drop distance on the right here as we have on the left here. And what that does is in differential leveling, this is a differential. We're going, we're comparing one side to the other side. Oops. And <clears throat> we are guaranteed by symmetrically placing the auto level in the middle that the drop distances to where it sights on the pole is the same on both ends. So the earth curvature ends up not being an issue. It drops out of the equation because we are guaranteed that these two sites these two marks are at the same elevation or the same level. It doesn't matter whether you're on a flat earth or a curved earth or whatever uh, because of differential leveling. That's a beauty of differential leveling is the earth curve drops out 
it doesn't affect your measurements at all. The other advantage of doing this is that when you're sighting, say, in the back sight, the amount of refraction that you pick up is the same as the amount on the foresight because you're symmetrically placed. The atmosphere changes the same in both directions. So if you pick up refraction looking on your back sight, you're going to pick up the same refraction on the foresight and it cancels out. So in differential leveling, you have two advantages is you minimize refractive effects and the uh, curvature of the earth does not affect your measurements. Now, let's look at um, any questions on that? Hello? Have you got a fish tank in the background there, George, or something? A fish tank? Yeah. What do you mean? It just sounds like you've got a, a like some water filling up or something. Is it? Is oh, it you mean the noise? Yeah, yeah. You mean the noise? Oh, that was the furnace fan kicking on. Sounds like it turned off anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's off. So are we good on that part now? Well, you... I'm just going to reserve all my questions for later because I don't want to interrupt the flow. Well, you can at this point before I bring up the next graphic. Um, did you say it didn't matter about the level um, being out of adjustment or something oh yeah 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 if your other level is out of adjustment you are guaranteed that when you do a back sight and a foresight that you're going to hit the same elevation on both now you don't want to do that you uh that that okay um this property is useful say if you're going to do a two peg test to check your auto level is all I'm saying is, um, yeah, let me back up here, is, yeah, it's important to have your auto level and adjustment for doing the differential leveling as we proceed to the next step. Yeah. But if you, all you wanted to do was to sight and get the same elevation on two poles without moving the auto level, you put it in the center, that you are guaranteed whether it's out of adjustment or not. It could be shooting high, it could be shooting low, but it's going to shoot high or low the same amount on the back sight and the foresight. And that would be your first step in a two-peg test is uh, you want to have two marks that are at the same level or at the same height in order to check your auto level. I probably shouldn't have even said that. Uh, let, let, let's just discount that. Is We're assuming that your auto level is on um, uh, because we need it to be adjusted properly in order to do differential leveling and move ahead on, uh, you know, uh, taking it in steps. Okay. Okay. So I, we, I wasn't okay. trying. I wasn't trying to imply, Bev, that you can do this with your auto level being out of adjustment. That's that's not what I was trying to imply. All I was trying to say is that even if the auto level were out of adjustment and you did a back sight and a foresight where you're set up in the middle, you're still going to have the same elevation where it hits the poles. Um, but, oh God, yeah, I'm sorry. I probably well, yeah, should have yeah. Do, said that. Do, yeah, don't worry about that. Let's just assume as we're going forward that you can't adjust an auto level and the auto level is um, set, calibrated, horizontal. We've already done our two-peg test. We've checked it. It is indeed calibrated right then Correct. we don't need to yes. worry about how you know if it's out of adjustment because it shouldn't be should it it should always be bang on right yeah yeah, yeah. you want your auto level uh oh, tuned in as close as you can to uh be uh giving you a um a horizontal okay so here's differential leveling this is what buster was interested in Okay, so what I put here in red is differential leveling with a symmetric placement of the odd level. One, it nulls the errors due to earth curvature, and it reduces refraction effects to near zero. I went through that. Okay, so let's say we start. We, we're going to move ahead in three steps with our odd level to try to um, do differential leveling. Now, the whole purpose of leveling is to transfer 
a known elevation to other places on the Earth is you set up a reference, I'll call it R here, a reference elevation, and you just want to transfer it forward um, to, to other spots on the Earth to establish places at the same level or the same elevation. Now, that's one, one thing that uh, surveyors do, but they do much more than that, uh, particularly in this country where I'm at, uh, people have a lot of... Uh, uh, hunting grounds and stuff, and they need to establish boundaries. In fact, uh, the surveyors in uh, where where I live spend most of their time establishing boundaries rather than doing leveling. Uh, construction companies have their own levels and that and people that operate levels, and they don't need surveyors to do that. They, they'll be do grading and leveling and stuff. But uh, as far as uh, surveyors go, professional surveyors go, their their primary job around here is establishing boundaries because that that's a legal thing that needs to be established and they need to be able to sign off on legal documents on property lines and stuff like that so most of their time is used in establishing boundaries rather than doing a lot of leveling but the differential leveling procedure is that all right we set up our auto level at position 1a the the black Again, the black thick line is the actual surface of the ground, okay? And this thin ground, this thin blue or green line here that you see is a level line that goes through M. M is our monument. Say this is a peg that we put in the ground that we know its specific height to it. The surveyors will call that a monument. And I'm saying for just purposes of illustration, this monument, the top of the monument is two inches above ground level. And the top of the monument, point M, is at 1180 feet, zero, zero inches. That's about where I'm at here above sea level. So that's our, our, our monument. Now, we want, to transfer an elevation at R, which is at five feet or 60 inches above the monument. So from here on the monument, top of the monument, to this point here on the reference is 60 inches, okay? So what we wanna do now is transfer this height or this elevation, say, uh, as we move forward along the earth, we can do that. And this is how you do it with differential leveling. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we have poles. We have two poles. Okay. That, this green pole and this green pole. This is our first step. We set our auto level in the middle. And we adjust the height of the auto level with the tripod and the tribeck adjustment screws on the base of the auto level. So we're shooting... 60 inches above the monument and we rotate our auto level around and we shoot and note the marking on the pole on the foresight this is our foresight now and the mark at a is going we're reading on our pole 72 inches that's in the pole readings here so our first pole reading is 72 inches okay and the reason why it's reading more than 60 inches is because we've got the pole set down on a hole and this hole is about 12 inches deep. So the, the marking on the pole is not going to be reading 60 inches like it did on the pole here. It's going to read more and by, by the depth of the hole that the pole is in. So we're reading 72 inches here. Now, <clears throat> but we know that point A is at the same elevation as the point R is. But the pole readings are different because we're on rough land or we're on uneven land. And so the pole reading is going to be different, uh, even though A is at the same elevation as R. So now we move our auto level ahead. Oh, before we move it ahead, again, it's midpoint. That is the distance from the auto level here to R is the same distance as from the auto level to A. Okay, that's what we mean by midpoint placement or symmetric placement. We, it's absolutely imperative in order to drop out the earth curvature that the auto level be in the middle between the two poles. So now we move our auto level ahead a certain amount 
and we measure the distance from the outer level to the pole, and then we can grab this pole here that we started with or grab another pole and move it ahead in the foresight direction again. Now this pole becomes the back sight for this auto level position. We put another pole in that's the same distance away from the auto level as this pole is. So that again, we're in, in the middle. So now we have our pole set up. We swing our auto level. It doesn't matter uh, um, uh, how high it is or the fact that it's on a hill or a depression. We don't care. All we're going to do is shoot the pole on the back side at B and note the reading on the pole. And B, let's say now, for sake of argument, we're reading 87 inches on the pole. It's above A. A was at 72 inches. We're now shooting the pole on the back side and we're reading 87 inches. We swing the auto level around. Whoops. <laughs> Where'd that come from? We swing the auto level around and now we shoot uh, uh, the pole on the foresight and we sight C on the pole. And the reading on C is 74 inches. We can see that the pole is a little bit on a, uh, on a hill compared to where B was. B was down in the hole. So the reading uh, on B is going to be higher because it's higher up on the pole than uh, D. D is a bit up on a hill. So now we're reading uh, or, or C, we're reading 74 inches on C, on the uh, foresight. So again, <clears throat> by having the auto level set in the middle, we can say that the drop on this elevation here to a level line, that drop distance is going to be the same as this drop distance, okay? that the earth curvature is the same on both, so it drops out when we do a differential measurement. Because basically what's going to happen when we're all done, we're going to be subtracting off uh, these readings. And so any earth curvature drops out of the equation because we're subtracting it out. Now, we move our auto level ahead now to position 3A and we measure the distance from the auto level to this pole and set up another pole. That's the same distance away. So again, we set our auto level up. It doesn't matter how high it is. And we shoot the pole here um, on the back site to D. And, and again, the auto level um, is shooting a straight line to D. And we read D. And it is 77 inches. We swing it around 180 degrees, read the pole at E, and we're reading 81 inches. Okay, so now let's say we want to find what the elevation is of this black pole, the top of it at F is. We want to know what it is uh, elevation-wise. So we have our measurements. Okay. The thing I didn't do here that surveyors have is a log book and they record all their back sites and their foresights. And I just wanted to kind of keep this simple without having a log book. But uh, Bev probably knows about it and Mobius has probably seen them too. Is you have a log book and you record your back sites, your foresights. And then uh, when you're done, you can uh, compute what the elevations are by adding and subtracting the pole readings. And basically what you do is if I want, since I know the monument is at 1180 feet and I know R is five feet above it or 60 inches above it, let's find the height of F uh, above the monument. The monument is our, uh, uh, our, our reference height. So we want to find out how high it is. Well, what you basically do is you take the reading that you start with at R, which is 60 inches, and <clears throat> you add your backsight pole readings and subtract off your foresight pole readings. And that's what I'm doing here. For example, if you want to find the elevation of point D, this elevation, we start with 60. We add in our backsights. The backsight is B and D. 
and we subtract off the foresight readings, which are A and C. So we got R plus B plus D minus A minus C, or 60 plus 87, 77 minus 72 minus 74, and that gives us 78 inches. So point D, the elevation of point D, is actually 78 inches above the monument. Now, let's find the elevation of point F. Well, point F is we start with our reference, which is 60 inches. We add in all the back sites, B and D, and <clears throat> um, uh, uh, the, we look at the pole reading at F, which here I showed to be 35 inches. That is, we have the pole next to this black pole, and we read on the scale that it's reading 35 inches. That is equivalent to a back sight, because if we have the outer level set here, we'd be shooting back at the pole. So we add in B, D, and the reading on F, and subtract off A, C, and E. And that's what I've shown here. And by adding and subtracting all these numbers, we get that the height of F above the monument is 32 inches. Now, this might seem a little confusing. Basically, all you're doing, if you look at what's going on with back sights and foresights, we start at 60 inches here. We know that point A is going to be at 60 inches. So now B is above that by how much? Well, the gap between B and A. It's B minus A is that height right there. Oops. Yeah, change that to, let's make it black so it's more distinct. So this, this gap here is the height difference between B and A. So that's B minus A. So we take R plus, if you look here, B minus A, that's the height difference. Now when we move our outer level ahead and we shoot B and then do on the back side, do a foresight to C, we know that C is going to be the same height, height as B. So now we can look at the height difference between D and C. D minus C is that gap distance. So we started with R at 60. We've gone up this height, B minus A. We've gone up another height, D minus C. That's what I'm showing you here. And then when we move our arm level ahead, we shot D and we rotate 180 to shoot the point E. So E and D are going to be at the same elevation. And so what's going to be the height of F? It's going to be the difference between E and F and lower. Rather than adding, we subtract that off. So we're subtracting this height difference, E minus F, which is there. So if you add all these up, you can see that these numbers uh, is we're adding in back sites, B, D, and a minus minus F is a back site. And then we subtract off our four sites, A, C, and E, just as I I did here. So basically, by by adding in your backsight pole readings and subtracting off your foresight pole readings, all you're doing is accounting for these differences in heights and the gaps between when you've moved the auto level forward and backward. So that's basically all differential leveling is, is you're, 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 you're assuring that the auto level is in the center, you do a backsight foresight, uh, that that nulls out your earth curvature and uh, reduces your refraction. So uh, if you wanted to find, say, the 60 inch point by knowing the reading on E, and we know the height of E, the elevation above um, uh, the monument for E by going through the back sight and foresight readings on the pole, I can establish that E is actually 78 inches above the monument. So if I want to be at the same height or the same level as R, which is at 60 inches above the monument, I know I have to drop down 18 inches because E is at 78 inches. And if I drop down 18 inches, then I know 
that this spot here is going to be at the same height or the same level as the reference point. So that's basically it. So did Buster have something more? Well, nah, yeah, I was, I was just wanting to hear you say, I saw the diagram and uh, so you can't get the difference of your foresight on a pole until you move up and do the backsight to the former foresight. Uh, pardon, run that again. Uh, yeah, the height difference. I mean, the height difference is, yeah, you have to move. I mean, yeah, yeah you, you keep, you, you have to do another setup. And now, of course, I could, if I wanted to take the time, I could have done this sort of thing. I'll, I'll mess up this diagram. And suppose what I could have done is I could have taken the time and adjusted the height of the tripod and the tribeck of the auto level and shot the same spot like that on that step and then done the same thing, do the same thing here with this one. Then all I'm doing is following the level line. R has been transferred to here. So this height here, um, so this height here is going to be the same as this height here, as the same as this height here, if I happen to line up my marks. Uh, taking the time to adjust my uh, tripod and the tribeck base on the auto level so that I'm sh on the back side I'm shooting the same mark as the same foresight that the previous foresight then I'm guaranteed that this elevation this elevation this elevation and this elevation are all the same elevation at 60 inches but what? you know for for sake of go ahead Oh, that was that's fine. I get what you're saying. I was I thought at the beginning you said you were transposing the the same height of M to F. No, no. What I wanted to do initially is find out what the elevation of F was. Okay. Uh, that must be my mistake. It, I thought you said you were transposing M to F. No, no. Oh, M, okay. M would actually be right about here. If I were to transpose M, it would probably end up being right about there. Okay. Or no, it would be, I'm sorry, not there. It would be right on the green line. Okay. Yeah, that was all I had. That That's it for me. If anybody else has any, I'll go on mute. Yeah. Yeah. If I were to actually be transposing M, it would, when I'm all done, M would end up being there. So I was so just trying to, to find. Well, back to the right. original, like, like, don't they, like, a lot of these tools, they say you can do a, a, a double run to get back to the same spot. Well, that's a different a thing. That, yeah, that's a different thing. Oh, okay. That, that's for uh, checking the instrument. Okay. For Let me, um, I'll get rid of this here. Hang on. Let's say on, um, what you're talking about is we're doing a top down look right now. This is not, uh, this is a top view, let's say. Let's say we start here and we want to end up here. Okay, mm -hmm. now uh, there's really no set standard um, on this is how many setups you need to do. Typically people do about 10 setups on a double run. Um, and basically what it's telling you 
is that if I set up my auto level, say starting here at A, and I want to, um, so we start here on A, and we set up our auto level, and we say we have a pole sit here, and our auto level would be set in the middle. Um, uh huh. Let's just do it. Our auto level is sitting there in the middle, and then what we do is um, uh, make uh, notes of uh, uh, where we're hitting on the pole. Okay, we we do pole readings at each step. So now uh, let's just say. Oops. Okay, I'm just going to set up a bunch of poles here. Okay. Okay. And now, th this is one setup here, and this is another setup. They are level sitting in the blue blue areas. Okay. I'm sorry that this should be a black pole. Whoops. That should be black. Okay. So uh, we've got our pole. So here's our first set. We do a differential level. We we make a mark on our pole here at A, and we swing our auto level around. We make a reading on this pole, the first pole. Okay. Now we move our auto level ahead, and we um, uh, do a back sight to shoot this pole, and do a foresight to hit this pole, and we make a note of those marks in our uh, log book. Now we move our on level ahead, do the same thing. We do a back sight to this pole, a foresight to this pole. We know, know all the pole readings. So what they mean on the double run is you go out, say uh, 500 meters, and you come back 500 meters. So you've got a total run of one kilometer. They say uh, after doing all this, pardon? Oh, no, no, I was, but you have to uh... Like, uh, you have to add and subtract your height measurements, right? Like on the pole, when you do yeah, first sight yeah. and back sight, you're, you're adding and subtracting. Yeah, what you height. do is you first, yeah, I, I, you, you can do it in real time or you can just put it in your log book and then look at, do all the calculations afterwards, you know, adding and subtracting, adding in your back sight, subtracting off your foresight. But you have a log book and you uh, write down all your back sight and foresight readings. And you go out to B and you go back to A. Now what that spec means is after you've done all these setups, if you're very, very careful and you're real meticulous in setting up your auto level, that when you go back, see what, once you come out to B, then you reverse the procedure. You set up again and start moving back towards A, okay? doing back sights and foresights. And when you get back to A, that spec, let's say it says um, uh, a double run, one kilometer will be within five millimeters, let's say, is what they say is that when, when you get to this point here and you do your last setup and you, uh, you, you shoot the pole, that after you've done all your calculations, that the reading you get upon return, that reading will be no different than the initial reading by five millimeters. Okay, and that's pretty damn good when you're going out, you know, a kilometer with all these different setups of doing back sights, foresights, and stuff. And um, uh, uh, if you had a perfect operator and a perfect auto level, then you would be hitting the same mark, right? Uh, as you no, started. No, no. With. So, so I mean, based off the diagram that you had, do you always measure? Do you always subtract the foresight of one reading from the backside of your next reading? Yes. Yeah. What if? Yes. What if your? What if your auto levels in a divot? And you're actually your back sight is below your former foresight. Oh here. Hang on. Well, 
Okay. Um, what this does, when you add the back sight and subtract out the foresight, what you're doing is actually just subtracting these height differences. Okay. Now, if the height difference, let's say, um, let's take this, this one and say instead of when we set it up that we're shooting higher than A with, uh, on the back sight, that we're shooting lower than A, kind of something uh -huh. like that, okay? Yeah. Um, what happens, let me get rid of this. Yeah, go away. <laughs> okay. What happens it, when we add the back sight, that would be this number, and we subtract the foresight, we get a negative number, right? Because this one's lower than this, and that tells us that we just happen to be shooting lower. This distance, that if I start off at 60 inches, I got 60 inches, say, I'm starting off with 60 inches here, okay, on the reading on the pole. And this pole reading here was B, which is 87 inches, okay. Now, if I happen to set my tripod lower than that, so now I'm shooting below this, so that I'm shooting at this point, let's say I might be uh, reading, say, 80 inches, okay. So if this was 87 inches, see let's say here we're eight, we've got 87 inches and here we have 80 inches that this is actually seven inches lower right so okay. our back sight is 80 we add that and we subtract off the foresight which is 87 so we end up with what a minus seven inches so we start out with 60 we add in 80 subtract off 87 so we got 60 minus seven or 53 inches so it all comes out so as long as you're adding in the back sights and subtracting out the four sights the numbers all work you know if it, so what, if it ends up being it or how do you end up with that at, at, at d and c i mean does it work out at the end i mean like what you've changed will it still work out at the end of f sure mm -hmm. because now um <clears throat> let's say uh, my D, that's oh, it's got messed up here. Ah, crap. <laughs> um, here, let me just get rid of that too. George, while so you're my D one. is still here. Whoops. George, while you're doing that, can I just get a clarifier? Yeah. Is um the the double run is that the same as closing the loop? Yes. Yeah, it's exactly the same principle, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, that's what they mean. Yeah. Double right, run. Right. You go out and you come back, you're closing your loop. And then closing your loop for accuracy of all your measurements over that run. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. basically what it is is to check how good you are as an operator as well as how good the auto level is. I mean, there, there, there's two sources of error that can creep in. One is if your auto level is out of adjustment, and the other is how good are you as an operator in sighting the pole and estimating, say, between graduation marks and stuff, you know? Right. Cool. Thank you. So... It, it comes with experience. I mean, the more experienced you are, uh, the the less operator error that's liable to creep in, right? Okay, so back to this is um, now, see, D was at 77 inches, but C now is going to be much lower in this case, in 74 inches, it's going to be, you know, uh, maybe down here at around 30 inches or whatever. So C is the foresight. Well, D is the back before? sight. Uh, C Sorry. was 74 inches. Here, here's the numbers here. C was at 74 inches when it was up here. So now it's way down here. So, But it's uh, now it's 7 inches less. So 74 minus 760. No, 67. no. No, 
No. It's only seven inches left on this side. Well, it would be the same e seven inches, though. No. Uh -uh. Well, it, no. it's at the same seven inches with respect to something here, but not with respect to D. Oh, oh okay. No, no, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, since, since this just dropped down seven inches, you're right. This will drop down seven inches, too. Okay. Okay. My, my mistake. You're right. So... C now will be at, uh, what, 67 inches, right? Okay. It was 74, so now it would be 67 inches, right? Okay. Um, so when we uh, subtract the back site or the foresight C from the back site D, we end up with uh, uh, a gap of seven more inches, right? Okay. So it all works out, but Buster in the wash. I mean, as long as uh, uh, you you note your pole readings down correctly in that by starting with your reference and adding your back sights and subtracting off your four sights, is if you, you study this section here that I did is where we're adding back sights and subtracting four sights and you group them appropriately. All you're really doing is either adding the height difference or subtracting the height difference, depending upon whether uh, your, your next setup is shooting higher than the previous mark or lower than the previous mark. You're just you're just adjusting for these height differences. I was just wondering, like when, when we changed that, you know, you went from, you know, 87 to 80. And then I was just wondering if you could work it out to the end, if it still ends up the same to F. Well, you no. Know, well, let's look at it. Let's go through the numbers. Okay. That'd be awesome. We, we agreed that D hasn't changed, right? So D okay. is at 77 inches, right? I'll, I'll mark it down here. This is 77. Whoops. That's 77 inches, right? And yeah. we've agreed. Oh, I'm sorry. Was it 77? Yeah. The, okay. Paul reads. Uh, are at 77, and this reading now will be at 70 inches, not 67. So I, I don't know where the hell I came up with 67, but that will be at 70 inches, right? Because we dropped it, or no, 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 that's not right. Okay. Our, let's see, our A, A was at, um, Oh gosh! Here, let let me start over. But um, something got messed up here. Let me. I apologize. Here, hang on. Let's do what you wanted to do and go through it again. Okay. Okay. This is what we originally had. All right. Uh, this is Buster I'm talking to? Yes. Okay. Because I don't have the Discord up. I can't tell who I'm talking to. I just That's okay. go by, by audio. Okay. So this is our initial setup. Okay. Our A is 72 inches. Our B is 87 inches. So now we're going to move our auto level and adjust it. So instead of shooting high above A, we're actually going to shoot below A, right? We're going to do this sort of thing. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, let me clean this up a little bit. So this is our D and this is our C here. So D is still going to be the same as what it was. I haven't changed that. So we have to readjust our readings now for A and C. Okay. 
Now follow me on this to make sure I don't make a mistake. Okay, let me just clean this up a bit. Okay, so now um, our B I was just wondering if the process that you do would still work out to the same measurement you had it. Yeah, in. it will. It has to. Yeah, of course okay, it okay, has okay. to. Yeah. Okay. Um, because otherwise, what good would this be? Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Um. Okay. So our A is the same as was before. We're shooting the rod at seventy-two inches. Now. I'm going to put a new number here next to B so we can keep track. So before B was up here and we were shooting at 87 inches. Now we're shooting lower than A. Pick a number. A is at 72. Let's say what we said if we dropped it seven inches below. Is that okay? That's fine. Yeah, I think that's what you were okay. saying earlier. Yeah. So if we drop it seven inches below, we're actually going to be reading 65, right? On okay. for B. So B now is reading 65 inches. That's what I've got there. Yeah. Uh, are you seeing that in the poll readings next to uh -huh. it? Okay. Okay. So B is at 65. We've dropped how much? We from 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 the previous reading we've dropped uh, 22 inches, right? 87 less 65. B B used to be up here at 87, so we, we've dropped down to 65, so we've dropped down 22 inches from what it was before. So, so we've dropped our auto level down 22 inches from the initial setup. Okay. Okay. So then that means C has to be lower but than 22 inches than it was before. So C now will be uh, 52 inches, right? If we're 22 inches lower. Okay. We, we've we dropped B down 22 inches from where it was initially, right? So C also has to drop down 22 inches more from what it was. So if C was at 74, it now has to be at 52, right? I'll be honest with you, George. You I, thought that, I thought that like when you set your auto level up, you just take the readings off the pole. It wouldn't matter... What? Uh, it seems like you, it, right. it just seems like the, with the way you've got it set up, you're getting the cart before the horse. No, we have to know what the pole reading is here at C. We just can't pick any random number, right? I mean, I, if, I, I, if the I author, agree. um, here, let me let me do this. Here's our auto level. Whoops, what the heck? <laughs> okay, here's our auto level site. Initially, our auto level site was there, right? Uh -huh. So the difference from here to here was 22 inches. We dropped the auto level down 22 inches, right? Okay. Going from here to here is 22 inches. That's what we dropped it down because our new right. reading B is 65. B used to be up here at 87, so we've dropped it down 22 inches. Up here was 87. Well, at this point, you have to change your equation, right? So, like, if uh, no, was no, R, no, 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 no. R plus B plus D, see, now you have to change your whole equation. No, we do. don't. No, we don't. No, we don't. I'll show you why. First, we've got to make sure we agree on the numbers here, Buster. Um. Here. Let me do this. Well, you can't. You can't say in your equation R plus B plus D plus F minus yes. A minus C minus E. Well, the way yes. you've got it set up, you'd have to change your equation because now you've got no, no, R no, 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 A, no, B no. It's backsights and foresights. It's backsights and foresights. It doesn't matter what the readings are. Yeah, but if if We're B still is doing lower than A. But it doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. It comes, it comes out in the wash, Buster. 
Yeah, but if B is like if you're going through this process, it doesn't like, matter if B. <laughs> okay. I mean, I get what you're saying. You lower that one reading, but in real time, if you use that equation and you go do three, four sites and back sites, and I was like, if I took your equation, I would be messed up because if my my two A was lower than one A and one three A, then I couldn't use that B plus D plus F yes, you minus can. A minus C. It. Yes, How you could can. you if B's lower than well, A? I'll show you. Well, let, let's look at what happens here. B, okay, doing this equation now, our B, rather than being 87, is 65. So if I put in here, Sixty-five, and our C now, rather than being, um, uh, let's see, B D. Let's see, R B D. Oh, we got it. Our D hasn't changed, so that's still the same, 77. So we're subtracting off A. A is 72 there. And now we subtract off our C, which is 52. So that number there is 52, okay? Now if we do that, let's add it up. We got 60, I add 65, that's 125, I add 77, that's 202, I add 35, that's 237, now I subtract off 52, that's 185, I subtract off 74, that's 111, and I subtract off 80. Oh God, did I get the numbers wrong? Did I add right? Let's see, 65, 62, 52, 50, let's see, where's C, C, what the heck happened, oh, I, let's see, C is seven, oh, that's not C, I'm sorry, God. Uh, 72 is A. Shit. So I got to move this over. This is. I apologize. Do you see what I'm saying here? Is C is 52. C is a second subtraction. So this is 52. Okay. So now if I add them, if I start with 60, I add 65, add 77, that's 202, add 35, that gets me 237, I subtract off 72, that's 165, I subtract off 52, that's 113, and now I subtract off 81, that gives me 32. So we get the same number. I just always thought they went out and they, you know, you set your auto level up. You got a pole reading, foresight, backsight, and then you would move and get your pole foresight and backsight. I didn't realize you would have to get your backsight to subtract from your foresight. I just don't understand how you would get your uh, backsight lower than your foresight, like how you had it at the first. And how you would... No, the backsight is lower than the foresight on this one. The backsight was higher than the foresight yeah, on yeah, yeah. the first time around. Well, how would... You know, you changed the numbers, but you didn't change the equation. You don't change the equation. Then you would it have doesn't to, matter. Though. No, you don't. No. 
Uh, you would have to, like, if, if the way you got it set up now, you'd have to change your equation. No, no, you don't. Well, the thing is, you is somebody you'll have a record book. You have a record book, and you just record your back sights and your fore sights. And then, when you're all done, if you want to get elevations, you add your back sights in, you subtract off your fore sights. It doesn't it matter. Um, what the, okay. You have your, your, your log book, right, for doing the back sights huh? and the fore sights. All right. Okay. And all you do is record the pole readings in those numbers, yep. right? In those columns. You, uh, okay. If you're doing a back sight, you put it in the back sight column. If you're doing a fore sight, you put it in the fore sight column. And you go through right. all these steps. And you, you, you put all your pole readings in. Then when you're done, you add in the back at, at any given step. If you want to find your elevation, you add in the back sights and subtract off the foresights. It doesn't matter if the back sight was higher or lower than the previous foresight and vice versa. It doesn't matter. It all comes out in the wash. You add in the back sight and subtract out the foresight. Right. And it doesn't but matter what, if the back sight like, or the fore. Go ahead. But like in that middle now that we've lowered that auto level. Right. If you're adding in the foresight. Adding in the back sights and subtracting the four sights, this middle yeah. one at 2A, it's lower. Middle one at 2A. Yes. You know, it two, is two lower, A, but your auto level is lower. So, how does yes. that equation still work if well, because, your back sight okay. is lower than your foresight? Because of the fact that you're looking, well, by adding and subtracting back, um, back sights and four sights, it is if we're subtracting the backsight off or, or subtracting the foresight off the backsight, what are we essentially doing? That is, at, at this point, if we take the backsight marking here B, which is lower than A, and we subtract A from B, we get a negative number, right? B, in this case, is 65 inches. A is 72 inches. So uh, if B is below A, we're going to end up with a negative number. Are we not, Buster? Yeah, that's fine. But you don't know for sure, like, your next rod sighting could be a whole different. Like, you could have another divot at C and D. Yeah, that rod yeah it doesn't matter. Uh, higher uh, or lower. Uh, see, this is differential leveling. It's subtracting. You're subtracting a backsight or a foresight from a... Uh, a backside at each rod. This is what differential is, is you're subtracting. Differential means subtracting. So it doesn't matter. You could raise this whole pole up or down. Say, say if this pole were in a divot here, Buster. Suppose this, right now we have two readings, okay? Let's say D, we're reading 77 inches, and C, we're reading 52 inches, okay? Now, yeah. let's say the pole's in a hole. Say the pole, bottom of the pole is way down here, okay? Yeah. Now, each of these readings will change or be larger by the same amount. If this pole moved from here to here by 10 inches, then both yeah. readings will change by 10 inches. So when we subtract them, that 10 inches drops out. It doesn't yeah. matter. Well, so, so what about if you were going to do the double rotting where you had, say... Okay, that... Double, uh, are we done with this before we talk about double rotting? Well, I just, uh, I'll be honest with you, to have horizontals all switched and you've got to add your, you've got to subtract your back sight from your foresight. I don't know, that just seems crazy. No, you're subtracting foresights from back sights. Okay, well, that's wild but what if you were to say you wanted to be super accurate and you went another 30 meters past your foresight with another measuring rod and you were making sure that you were dead on now you've got i don't know i don't know what you would do with like you, you're saying these horizontals intersect but if you were due to do double rotting how would you work that out you know okay. so like if you've got well like let's talk about rod, the whole thing a second 
Uh, look, um, let me let me let me pause for a second. I just uh, before I even said that, I should have waited and see if anybody else wanted to ask questions. I apologize. Make sure make yeah, sure before, nobody else wanted to ask. Yeah, before I move there. on, is there any questions on this? Does Mobius have a question? I do, but I, I to be fair, I got to get question. going. Yeah, I got to get going pretty soon. So, um, but okay. we, we already went over it a little bit, George. I've, I've got plenty of questions, but I don't want to like frustrate you. Well, and ask them. All that. You're not frustrating me. Go ahead, ask. All right. Well, for one of the questions I have is how do you determine the instrument height when it's you don't have different? To. Um, what? Uh, it's arbitrary, however you want to set it. If you're doing the pole readings and reading the poles on the backsight and foresight, uh, you can set the instrument height at to whatever you want it to be, hmm. as long as you can read the pole, as long as you have enough pole to read. Okay, <clears throat> so the instrument height has nothing to do with the measurements that you're taking in your foresight and backsight? No. Well, except for changing the readings. I mean, if I were, say, to take, say, in the middle here, say, if I were to take this now on a level and move it up, I'm going to read, I'm going to have a different reading on the poles, right? Yeah. But the readings are going to change by the same amount as I root. If I raise the auto level up, say, 40 inches, the reading here will be 40 inches higher, and the reading here will be 40 inches higher because I'm guaranteed with the auto level set in the middle that as long as the distance between these two poles isn't much greater um, uh, to, um, uh, you know, where I can read the poles, the changes are always going to be the same amount. If, if I raise the auto level up 20 inches, both readings are going to raise up, uh, are, are going to read higher by 20 inches and so on. Or if I lower it by 10 inches, the readings will change by 10 inches. See, that's the whole thing in differential leveling is, is in one case I've got a back sight, in the other case I have a foresight, and they both change the same amount. Since I'm subtracting foresights from back sights, that amount that's changed drops out. It okay. subtracts itself out. If I added 20 inches on the back sight and added 20 inches on the foresight, when I subtract that foresight from the back sight, that 20 inches drops out, right? Yeah, I get that. Um, also, one other question before I have to go. Uh, how, how are you plumbing these... Uh, these measuring rods to be perpendicular to the line of sight so that you get an accurate read. Plumbing them to the line. Well, usually your rods, at least the ones I have, have a, a little bull size bubble on it. So yeah. you can set them vertical. I know, but like in this diagram, how would, <clears throat> cause for one, if you're doing one setup, say at one A, you can uh -huh. make sure that the rods are perpendicular to the line of sight, but then it wouldn't be the same measurement at two way because it would be in a different well, the position. Thing is, the earth curvature is uh, ever so slight over say shooting um, uh, 60 meters or whatever between the auto level and the pole at, at, at 60 meters. Um, the, um, um, so you can't tell that uh, difference. Think, well, well, you're doing differential leveling. You're, you're shooting the back sight and foresight. So like I said before, initially, the amount of drop due to earth curve is, is the same in both cases. So it, it, you're subtracting, and so it drops out. It, it doesn't affect you. You can't um, tell whether you're on a flat earth or a curved earth doing differential leveling. But you can tell if the uh, poles are vertical or not. 
And well, how parallel, much do you think they're going to change? I mean, to get a one I don't degree think change, change you have all. to have the poles separated by 69 miles to get one degree. Do you think there's going to be much of a change in vertical between the poles uh, over, say, uh, 100 meters or 50 meters? It's, no. going, to be, so, it's going to be well you, beyond anything that you can adjust for. Would, would you say that, uh, that it'd, be, it'd be impossible to get that? measurement you could with the uh, very accurate theabolite uh but i mean the amount that it's going to change your reading is so insignificant and so negligible as that it won't uh hang on a second i gotta get con some food here he's throwing this bowl at me <laughs> hang on. come here good boy yeah good boy come on It's a good break. Good time. Just not getting how you work out the, the equation. Face. equation. Yeah. You know, R RBD minus AC. RBD face. Go ahead. RBD face. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. It never changes. It's always the same. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering about the vertical uh, in your in your rod because it could be it could be perpendicular at one instrument, but it wouldn't be perpendicular at the next instrument, and then it's constantly changing on this diagram. But, thing, but, but over the distances in which you're doing this, even at a hundred, two hundred meters, three hundred meters, uh, the difference. In angle on that uh, on those poles from vertical is uh, well, yeah, like you said, so sixty nine miles, right? So it would be sixty nine miles for just one degree. Miles. So you how how, how much would you be able to to measure that over, say, fifty meters or even even well, fifteen hundred feet? You know. Yes. How, you how, could do how it. would you? You could do it with a theatolite. You can't do that with your setup with using a bubble level. You could never ever get the sensitivity in a spirit level or a bubble level or anything to know what the difference is. You'd have to have a very precision piece of equipment like my Topcon GTS 3B, which can measure an arc second difference. Uh, you those can are, those are maybe, pardon Sorry, those, those have computer boards on them, right? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. but that's only for, um, uh, doing the, the display and for uh, looking at the tachometer wheel to uh, get to uh, tell you what the angular differences are. Yeah, it doesn't use a computer board to calculate the the difference, the the angles. No. Oh, uh, do you know how that works? Like how it how it gives? Yeah, there's it... a tachometer wheel inside the instrument, a very fine tachometer wheel that's read optically and uh, by. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, you, you process the oct. What the computer is used for is to uh, process the um, um, readings off the tachometer into a digital display for you. You know that you read off uh, your display on the instrument. Is is that where that curvature switch thing is that I've been hearing about? No, that this curvature switch thing isn't something that's like on the outside of an instrument that you're going to toggle on and off. It's something. No, I figured it's internal, like, right? It's yeah, like it's built internal. into the programming or whatever. But, but, but that's not, but that's not for measuring angles. The curvature switch, the, this curvature correction or the refraction, there's two corrections that are made inside of the Adelaide if you want to invoke them. That's one for refraction. You have a winter and summer setting and one for curvature, but that only affects your uh, EDM capability, electric distance, electronic distance measurement. It has nothing to do with the measuring of angles, of the horizontal and vertical angles and uh, the outline. That does not, neither of those uh, corrections uh, affect your angular measurements. Mm. All right, well, like I said, I got to get going. I wish I could have yeah. carried this on longer. I wish I would have started earlier because then I would have been able to stay longer, but... I know you had some stuff to do, so. 
Anyway. Yeah. I guess, yeah, I'll talk to you all later. <sighs> so anyway, I don't know if that was worthwhile or not. <laughs> How would that change with the double rod, George? Oh, the double rod, yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right, am I done with this part that I have shown up? Well, can you not just add another rod in? Or do you have to do a whole new... Have you got well, no, i I, I got to show you a top-down diagram how you would do it. Top-down? You know, just add another rod in there, because that's all you're doing, isn't it? Doing two rods. No... Yeah, that's what um, you have a misconception I about think you what might it have is. A misconception, but go on. Okay, right. hang on. I'll show you with double raw. Just a minute. Okay, and the double rod setup is we're looking at a top-down view right now. We're going to start at this point, and we're going to end up at this point. And what we want to do is establish level. Okay, so oh, this is a top view. Here is a side view, like we had. Here we have our starting rod. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in a double rodding procedure, the way I understand it, is we're starting here at our reference point, and <clears throat> we set up our auto level. Let's say here, and we're going to shoot another rod with our auto level, right? And so here we're doing a back sight and a foresight to these two rods, okay? Now, <clears throat> what double rodding procedure allows you to do is so that you can catch errors right away like if you're doing a lot of setups and you want to transfer <clears throat> the level position or the elevation position from here to here say a mile away a couple miles away you're going to have a lot of setups and if you happen to make a, an error along the way and you're not aware of it you're going to transfer it all the way along and then you catch it at the end and you go oh shit <laughs> now i got to start all over again Okay. What double rotting allows you to do is minimize the possibility of making an error. So what you would do with a double rod is, <clears throat> let's say, here's where we start and here's our rod. Okay. Oops. Okay. This is this rod. This is this rod. Now in double rotting, uh, or, or let's just say we're going to, let's just first do a, a differential leveling okay, procedure. Let's just say we have a number of steps here. <clears throat> and then we're going to set our auto level up in the middle. We got our auto level, we're setting it up at different heights or whatever. And... We're um, oops. and we're shooting our level lines. Um, you know, we've got all kinds of setups. We're doing we're we're shooting our level lines. We're 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 doing our differential leveling. Okay, now so. This is our top view. Here, oops, here's our poles. Sitting here, okay. So this is our top view. We're looking at top down to our pole. So here's our circuit, what they call our path or our circuit. In double rotting, you set up a second circuit. That is, you can set up a pole here, another pole here, Say a pole here and a pole here or whatever. And what you do is you run two circuits at the same time. So you're doing differential leveling along this circuit here to get to the end. And 
we also start at the same reference point and we run a second circuit. We run a second circuit. They don't always have to be in line. They can be, but they don't have to be. So we run two circuits. This is what they mean by double rotting, is that there's going to be less chance if you make an error on this path or this circuit that you're going to make the same error on this circuit. So as you go along, you can compare the elevations that you're getting by running two different circuits because you're making two different sightings on two different sets of poles. So the numbers you're reading are different. So the chances are of making an error are reduced. Plus, when you're all done, uh, if both are run correctly, you can get a little more accuracy at the end by taking the two elevation readings and average it because you've taken two different runs, two different circuits. And if they both run perfectly, they'll give you the same numbers, but the chances are that the numbers are going to be right on. Uh, uh, you know, that the chances of that isn't as likely, but they should be pretty damn close. And if they're real close, uh, you average them and you can get uh, a better number because you've run two different circuits. That's all double run is. Double run isn't like you've been saying, Bev, where you set poles in front or in back and then sighting them at the same time. What you're doing is you're sighting two different circuits. You're going around two different circuits on a double run, or I mean a double double riding. If you look it up, you, you'll see that double riding, all that means is you run two different circuits or two different paths from start to finish so that you can uh, compare and uh, find errors if you happen to make them along the way. Yeah, it's take, just to ensure two, more two, accuracy. Two foresights and two backsights. That's correct, yeah. In fact, you can even do it with two different instruments, you know, uh, when they do uh, two different rods. No, you don't even need two different rods. No, you don't. You, you could... The very simple way of doing it is using the same set of rods and then just read different elevations. Say, do this circuit um, a foot lower than the other circuit. Start at a higher reference point so that the important yeah. thing is that you're reading different numbers on the rods so that you're not as likely to make the same error. Yeah. So it's self-correcting. Okay, yeah. well, whatever. If you look it up, that's what you'll find what double riding is. Yeah. Two foresights, two backsights. Shared straight line segment. But as you check. No. Every time you reset your level up. Alrighty. Happy I believe it. That's okay. Anything else? Well, I don't know. Mobius is gone now, so I don't know if anybody else got Yeah. Any Anybody else got anything? And we, we can go over this some other time. Mm -hmm. So how that was a pretty good presentation, George. Do you think you could get it better? Would you like to hear it when it we put it out, go over it again? Or are you, you say you're not going to be doing oh. that at Geo's? No, I'm not going to be doing it. That, so no. that was was that an exclusive for us then i guess so i don't see doing it anymore do you reckon um any other globe surveyors will um have a go at doing that or are you the only one left i don't know are you, you the have last to ask someone globe surveyor you're not even a surveyor i wouldn't you? call me a, i wouldn't call me a globe surveyor i'm not i've never um, advertised myself as being a surveyor. No, I know the procedures, I know the methods, but I you, don't you do it as to a make profession. The globe no. surveying thing, aren't you? I mean, where where are the actual? Well, there isn't any, is there? There's no real globe surveyors. That's why surveyor is a surveyor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a surveyor, isn't it? It's just a surveyor. There's no such thing as a globe surveyor. Because people don't, the no, actual surveyors don't no, survey I wouldn't, models, I, do they? No, I wouldn't. Um, 
I wouldn't put an adjective in front of surveyors. You know, surveying is a profession. Just, just surveyors. And they have I've certain procedures. Judged. They're all the same, aren't they? They all use the same tools yeah. and do the same job. There's no difference in any surveyors. Well, there is uh, in terms of speciality, uh, uh, how they specialize. I mean, you have certain people that are um, specialize in... Um, yeah, yeah, quantity uh, surveyors surveying. are definitely different than land surveyors, aren't they? I mean, you got your land surveyors and you got geodetic surveyors. I mean, there's no uh, difference they, in those two. They're the same thing. I mean, I was meaning things like uh, quantity surveyors. What surveyor? Quantity surveyors. Quantity. Mm -hmm. yep. Never heard of that. Have you not? No. Is that because you've not been in the uh, building trade? No, could be. I don't know. I've I've never heard that. I mean, I've heard of construction surveyors and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, they're just plane all surveyors the same. Though. We, we, geodetic we, surveyors. Yeah, we decided they were all the same, aren't we? That they were the same. Were the quantity surveyors. Well, the principles are all the same. Not the principles are the same. It's, it's not just the same that as surveyors. Land surveying type thing. No, I don't know. Like I say, is I, I'm not familiar with quantity surveying mm -hmm. or what you mean by that. I had to do cool. it. It's boring. Could I ask Sorry. one more question? Yeah. If there's if there's a difference between plane surveying and what you've got as differentials, differential leveling that plane surveyors would use for differential leveling, why would they ever need geodetic surveying? Well, geodetic surveyors are doing surveying over much longer distances. You know, they're the ones that kind of like go cross country to set up uh, boundaries and monuments and stuff like that. They're not just involved with, uh, you know, grading and setting, um, um, you know, uh, Try, trying to level out a tract of land or something. They're, they're more interested in finding elevations over long distances places of, uh, to, to put markers or around monuments wrong to, uh, for specific latitude longitude and elevations well, would the uh, same principle the rbd phase still apply yeah, yeah the it never changes all, RBD all the phase same never changes yeah it would be the same so yeah. it wouldn't matter but, i mean it would be the same you, thing but geodetic surveyors are more interested in establishing fixed monuments no that, you just say, said. your plane surveyors or uh, boundary surveyors can go off of, you know, for no uh, mar you marking uh, property lines. You can't say there's no difference Pardon? in the surveyors and then say there's a difference in the surveyors. What's the difference now? No, I said... Bad off, I didn't say that. What I said is geodetic surveyors are more interested in establishing monuments that other surveyors can go off of. I mean, a plane surveyor or a surveyor in a construction company isn't going to be going cross country trying to establish uh, points of exact latitude and longitude and elevation. That's the job of the geodetic surveyors. Oh, no. I use differential, like... That's the question I wanted to ask you as well. When you were saying earlier, it's got to be in the middle. Like you had, to, I noticed you didn't you have, any, have to be. No, didn't no. have any horizontal Bell, distances, not. did you? Oh God, Bell, I didn't say you have to be in the center. The center gives you a balanced reading where the curve of the Earth drops out. If you mm -hmm. weren't in the center, then you have to start taking into account. Earth curvature and the amount of Earth curvature you take into account would depend upon how far off the middle you are. Well, but the Earth curve drops out, went, of, out of the measurement if you're in the center. Let's say you went 27 miles doing that method. Mm -hmm. How much curvature would you get? Doing that method well, that you uh, say the RBD uh, phase. You're, 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 you don't pick up any. You don't pick up any curvature in differential. 
Oh. It's a love lane. If you go 27 miles, if you so start there is, there is no at an elevation, at say, a five don't feet. Get any. Oh, God. No, it, does, it doesn't pick it up. There is curvature, but it doesn't pick it up because of the differential leveling procedure. So what sort if, of elevation if, do you if, get? Say you, well, won't you let me finish? I'm saying if you start, say, at a monument, Mm -hmm. and like zero. Uh, some monument marker and you want to establish a um, a level mm -hmm. at say five feet above that and you want to transfer 27 miles out mm -hmm. doing differential leveling mm -hmm. by the time you're done yep. you will have a level mark that is at the same height or the same level as what you started with it will just follow the curve of the earth but you said there is no curve. You can't determine. No, I didn't say that. I said the curve drops out. I didn't say that there is no curve. The curve drops out. That's the differential leveling guarantees that you will follow the curve of the earth. RBD if you face. were to say. RBD face. Set your. Uh, just here. Let me, let me bring the diagram up again. Okay, go on. That one with all three of them. <sighs> Yeah. Okay. That one. That's the one. It, I'll be you see this now? Okay. All right. Now, let's say <clears throat> I were to take. Is that a, and, for, for the Canadians? Oh, is that one? One A. Canadians. Two A, and three A. You know, it's no. One, two, and three. No. Or A. No. I just. One for the auto level, two auto level, three auto level. Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah, I like it for the Canadians. Now, let's say I took the time that after I did my first setup here, my first leveling, yep. and I want to transfer the height at R over back here by F. But now, one way I could that, do it. That's horizontal, if, right? Oh, God. Will you yeah. please just let me finish this real quick? Okay, I'm just checking though. Right? It is horizontal, no. isn't it? That line. Which line? The this one? one? From, from your auto level. The auto yes, level this is a horizontal line. Horizontal. This is a horizontal line it's that the auto level is establishing at 1A. Mm -hmm. This, if you looked at it, if I set a line parallel, Take a line that the auto level, and I moved it down to the earth. It is tangent now wow. to this level line that's following the curve of the earth, and we'll have the same amount of gap at this end as on this Sorry, end. Did you we'll say have the same tangent? Drop. A horizontal is tangent to something. Yeah, right here. Can you see that little? Hey, I do have one question. Just. Before you do that, yeah. before you lower that red line, uh -huh. it, like the way you've got it set up right now, if you were to move that measuring rod that's at B, if you mm -hmm. moved it over, doesn't that throw your measurements off? Well, yeah. When so you, RB, when you RB move RB it over, forward. you mean left or right? You mean left yeah, or right? Yeah. So, so if you moved the B, lev the measuring rod yeah. over out, like, say you moved it over, you know, 10 meters, it would yeah. throw your measurements off, right? Yes, it would. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you, you want to move your auto level, you want to, if you move the rod, you want to now move your auto level to be midway between. So you're going to have to move your auto level over too, ah, five I meters. See. If you What's move up the, with the, uh, the double rodding? How do you, you can't do double rodding the traditional way, can you? That's why you've got a problem with it. I see. No, no, you can do yeah, double. I line. see. Does it not work on the on the? Was that line? Buster that was just speaking? Buster, yeah, yeah, was that, that was Buster? Me. No, before that, that was asking me yeah. about the rod. Well, yeah, the rod. If you had it at B and you moved it over, say ten feet out of the divot, I mean that throws your measurements okay. all off. I said two, two. I said double rodding. Well, that's, well, if you moved it there, if 
you moved it, say, there, then what you'll want to do is move your auto level. So, pardon? no, 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 just extend the no, extend the red line. Don't move the auto level. Extend the red line from one A. Yeah. Well, what you could do is this. Uh, yeah. There yep. You there you go. That's it. That's it. Do that. Mm -hmm. Hang on. Nearly got a double rodding going on here now. Okay. Now, if you did that, now you're not guaranteed that the earth curvature is going to be balanced out. You'd have to move your odd level in between, say, over to this position, if you wanted to not have to take earth curvature into account. If you're offset from the center or from the midpoint, now you're going to have a little more earth curvature on this end than you would have on this end. So you'd have to figure that in, and you get around that by moving your auto level midway in between. Then you don't have to worry about that. Whoa. Okay. No, no, um, no. Yeah, be careful there. George, you see, <laughs> see that there? You've got two rods in the middle. Now, can you see that they're not? You've made a triangle within your red lines there, or even in your drawing. Like, Would you not say... That that shows that your auto level's knackered, or what my auto level what is knackered? Knackered? What yeah, because that's double rodding. You've got in the middle where you've got your, du your double. No, rod. that's not double. Yeah, it is. well, you want to call it double rodding, but that's mm -hmm. not what really but that, double rodding. That would check for your error, and your error would be shown by that triangle being formed there, because they should be parallel. In all reality, but you've got a triangle no. there. Now, what I would say that that triangle would show that your auto level's knackered or you've made a drastic no. mistake somewhere. Oh, uh, no, not really. Uh -oh. uh. Huh? <clears throat> Is the yawn the new? <coughs> Is it the um advanced? Look. Okay, this brings up a good point. What I've always been trying to tell you about. Would you, oh, it's gone. Is just would like, you not say that would be like a knackered auto level? Is that not like, because that's, in essence, that's sort of like the double, um, your two peg test, isn't it? Oops. <laughs> Have you got a new keyboard, George, or are you just slamming the door? I'm slamming the hell out of it. <laughs> no, the problem is, is my microphone is built in, so it picks up the uh, the keystrokes. Keystrokes? I wouldn't get yeah. a lot of strokes. It's very sensitive to it, because the microphone is right under the keypad. Sounds like Now, it. if I were to... Huh? Sounds like what? it. Yeah. Can't help it. I, I don't have well, an external just mic. Just a minute that I before can use. you carry on, right, George? In that double rodding thing that we've just shown there, I say mm -hmm. it's a check to make sure that your level's going right. In case you can't close your loop or whatever, then you are effectively doing a two peg test in between every transition that you're ever going to make. So you're checking your back sights with the four sights and double rods, right? So. Um, if you get a discrepancy, I'd say that means your auto level's knackered, but seems like you're saying that would be curvature of the earth. So, like, why don't you dis devise a method to do that? That's It's really well, weird that you can't see that it, there's a problem there for either uh, reality... Or there's a proof of your model in there somewhere. Can you not see that, George? I'm going to show you a very easy way to use your odd level to find out if you're right or wrong. Okay. In the top here, here we have your flat earth. Okay. Now I'm going to set my odd level up earth? here. Have you got uh, some flat earth? The top diagram here that I'm working on, do you see it? Straight line. Yeah, the straight line here, and now I've set my auto level up. Yep. Okay. And now I'm going to shoot out with the auto level mm -hmm. 
to this green rod here. Okay. Yep. Now, so now I'm going to shoot out. Okay, so now I've shot. Now I've got a mark on this pole here. Now I'm going to set up another pole right at the odd level here. It's about 0.7 of a meter away, my one. You can put it right up next to the odd level and get your mark here of where the center of the optics of the odd level is set up, okay? And we show it and we get a mark on this pole or get our reading. Now, you can either take the same odd level or get another odd level and set it up here so its optics are centered from where the auto, where the first auto level shot. And we're going to shoot back yep. okay, towards auto level here on the left side. Now, if you're on a horizontal plane, you should hit the center of the optics of the auto level doing that by shooting back, by having it set at the same height. Now, if you, if you shoot and you hit the same mark, say you're uh, 100 meters away, and you shoot back, and you see the same mark, then you conclude you're on a flat earth. But if you're on a curved earth, this is what will happen. You set your auto level up. Uh, let me redo this. Well, it's like, is this Sean Slope? I think we've got Sean Slope coming up here. So is anyone allowed to come in? Yeah, George is okay, just now, his keyboard. I'm going to set my auto level up here on the on the curved earth. Uh -oh. Okay, let's just, just so, for the sake sorry, of George, argument at this me... point, assume that the earth is curved. The top one, I assumed it was flat. Okay. Now, I'm going to take this auto level, and I'm going to shoot. Uh, this pole and say a hundred meters away just like I did on the top diagram so this auto level is going to shoot a tangent or a horizontal that's tangent to the earth at this point so this line is going to be parallel to the earth at this point so now i make a well you think it's shooting up but it's actually shooting a horizontal with respect to this point what if you put if you go further back and extend that would it not get closer to that black line to what if you extended it in the opposite direction like if you turned your own level round. Would it not be pointing down towards that black line? Because it's pointing no. up at one side. Does that not make it point down on the other side? No. Because if you that's look... What I was thinking that's what I thought horizontal was. Sort of even. No, on, on a curved earth, if I have a auto level set up, mm -hmm. say, at this point, and I, I have it shoot. You do you want another picture for? What's going on? How many pictures do you want to go from one to the other? Well, apparently you're not getting this. So, so just draw another picture. So now here's this line. The so the thing is, is oh, to you it looks like it's shooting up to a position here, but it's also shooting up to a position here from your terminology is because the earth curves away from you in all directions from where you are set up. It doesn't. The earth does falls it? away in all uh, directions. Can you just ask him if that's 100 meters or not, please? Yeah, is that, that's 100 meter shot, right? Yeah, say, 
I, I'm, I'm greatly exaggerating, of course, of what's going on. All I'm saying is take your odd level, set it up, shoot a pole 100 meters away. 100 meters get what is the a mark is, George, on. right? Oh, God. It is right. a lot, though, isn't it? Come on. 100 meters? Yeah. Do you yeah, it's about three, a little over 300 feet. That's the width of a length of a football field. Which is a lot, isn't it, for an auto level? No. Of course it is. Hey, no, just, wait a minute. Just thought of something, George. Like the the thing you did with differential leveling was in just a linear fashion, you know, just because the for the diagram. Mm -hmm. What if we were to do it in three D? What if we were to do a differential in a triangle? Triangle. Oh yeah. I'm not sure what you mean. Okay, so let's say let me let me find the picture. Sorry, sorry. If you do, uh, blah, blah, blah. You do one line, and then you could cross it uh, with another line. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, God dang it. Let me find the dang, dang picture. So you had 1A, 2A, and 3A, but let's say you did 1A, turned, and did 2A, and 3A met back to 1A. Close your loop. Yeah. Well, hang on. Let me just finish this, okay? We're, we're, okay. we're jumping Sorry. all over the place. I just yeah. want to say, all you have to do, Bev, is take your auto level, set it up, shoot a pole, say 100 meters away, so set your auto level up. So oh, God. Yeah, I hey, know, but I'm you're going to have to say, you say, say 100, but when I hear someone say 100, I think that's quite a long way, really. Like what's well, your how, long, your how far away do you want to be? How far away do you want to be? About 50 metres is normally the best, isn't it? It's ideal for an auto level. Unless you want to go for precision, then you bring it down to like 20, 25, 30 max. Okay, if you want to go 50 metres, hang on, let me think about what this is going to do for you. Same procedure. Are you going to be able? Are you going to be able to tell the difference significantly on two tenths of a millimeter? Why would I want to do that, George? Because that's the only way you can uh, determine whether or not you're on a curved Earth or not at fifty George, meters. You're going to have to be George, able to be. I don't give a shit about a curved Earth because I know the Earth is what is getting measured when I'm doing it. What do you mean? That's what I'm, trying to, do. I'm trying to tell you whether or not to, how you can determine whether or not you are measuring curve of the earth or not. Measuring is... elevation changes, George. It's an auto level. Yes. Right. So and your elevation changes will be in error. About? Your elevation changes will be in error if you're on a curved earth, even at 50 it's, meters, it's, if you can you read a difference of two tenths of a mile. Well, I'm done here, Beth. This isn't going to work. You're, you're interrupting again. Okay. Yeah, well, you are using the other level, George. Are you off? Uh, so that was a nice one. Has he gone? That would be nice if he has gone. No. Are you no, uh, no, still there. sticking still around, there. George? I mean, I know you've finished drawing and all of that, but you know, we like we go and we'll do an after party of uh, what the fuck George just did. Uh, it's been good. I really like it. You should do it. RBD face. What? I always said RBD face. RBD face. Yeah, yeah. Taught us a lot. Never changes. So, the um, when you do the double rodding, you are basically using the shared straight line segment, and that's exactly what me and Spot On did. But because you have a water level, you can do the segments 100 meters. You're not governed by the optics of a of an auto level. You just use the water level. And extend the segments. That's the beauty of it, George. It's all about that shared straight line segment. And the differential leveling. It's dead easy. 
Can't do it with optics, so, but you can take away the optics. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely not completely because you do level. have to look at the actual wall levels. Well, yeah. You know, just this. But I understand why you can't um, get what double rodding is, George. I understand. Your model dictates that you cannot know what it is. Yeah, because that's, that's really it, isn't it? Yeah. It's nice to know what George does think about that. The shared drawing, whether or not it's actually um, possible in geometry, firstly. Well, he was going through his numbers with the differential leveling. And then I apologize that I didn't even really think about doing the polygon with the 1A, 2A, and 3A. I shouldn't think about it before because he was going through his numbers and doing his thing. But if you were to do 1A, 2A, 3A in a polygon, you know, a triangle, does that formula still work out to close your loop? Well, it sounds like if you do 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, blah, 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 to infinity, you're just making a dawn gone. Yeah, but what about if you just do a few A's? It can't be an elevation change, can there? Because you've got to go back up. Once you go down, you've got to come back up you know, to close the loop. I'll show you. Too. You always... If you always have to subtract your foresight from your from your former backsight, that's crazy. Crazy. That's, I don't know. I know you're still here, George. Listening. Look, I'm gonna see that there. Is that what you sort of mean? Like, if you were to do um, your version of double rodded and go all the way around, would you end up with the Dornagon? I think you would. I think that you've just sort of demonstrated with your version of the thing because the, you can see the different lines there are just offset a bit. But that's just 2D. What is, when you start well, getting that's, into 3D... That is 3D. That, that's the 3D concept of the Dornagon. It's the only shape that you need. If you want to imagine you live on a ball, the Dornagon is the only shape that you will ever need. Because you're just dealing with straight lines, shared straight line segments. Yeah, but... I don't know. I'd have to see it in a polygon fashion. <laughs> That's why you, that's a nice one that you found, isn't it? <clears throat> Nicely done, George. What does he have there? He's just got double rodding, he's just got a root that it's took. You don't want to talk about it there, uh, George. Indian. No, I'm just trying to find have some uh, references for double rodding. Give me a I chance here. I know what here. double rodding is, George. It's a shared straight line segment. I know even... No, it is not. It's taking two different circuits at the same time. No, it's running two different circuits well, to check Do you check agree yourself. that if you were to use a shared straight line segment, as in the double rodded, it would be even more accurate than that? Would, wouldn't it? This isn't yeah, like about you... what someone else has done. Yeah. This is about what you can do. For and for the using the geometric principles like you are doing when you use surveying, then the shared straight line segment of a double rodded run, of a true double rodded run, would definitely give you the accuracy and the check to make sure 
that it is a shared straight line segment all the way along. Do you not think, George? I mean, it, I know it gets gets tricky, doesn't it? Because then you'd have to face the facts that when if somebody designed a water level test with a shared straight line segment, you might have to contemplate what it might mean if certain results were got through. As in a shared straight line segment. It, it's scary, I bet. I still can't get past the fact that if you were, let's say you were on a fairly like salt flats or whatever, and if you were doing the differential leveling and every time you set up your back sight was higher than your foresight, I would, I would, I would almost think of any surveyor, if every back sight was higher than your foresight from the previous setup, you'd be like, man, something's, something's off. Yeah. Yeah, you'd find that in, within your first um, two peg tests before you start. Yeah. yeah. Right, George, you can see that, the problems. You'd definitely work that out, wouldn't you? There's something not right here. Because I know you did the... Uh, you tried to tell us about a two peg test, but it didn't sound like you actually knew what a two peg test was, George. You do know what a two peg test is, don't you? That you perform every time before you set your auto level up for working. Have you ever done a two peg test? <laughs> yeah. Do you do it every time? Absolutely. Bullshit. Do you, do you not? Do you not do a two peg test every time, George? I don't use an auto level anymore. Oh. I used to. I thought you said you've still got one. Yeah, I still have it, but I've, uh, I I told you guys that I've abandoned it uh, in favor of uh, Precision Theodolite. It's much easier to color me. Is that your and uh, sure. GTS? Say so what? Is that your GTS? Yeah, the GTS 3B. Is that a Theodolite? Yes. Is it not a total station? Yes. Is that a theodolite? A, a total station. A total station. A total station is a theodolite that has EDM capability. It's just a total station, though, isn't it? Like the direct oh, name God. would be it's a total station and not a theodolite. It's a theodolite with EDM capability. It's a total station. Okay, okay it's a total station. Okay, right. So you've given a up... Total the station, a so total station a total has, station. as a subset, theodolite capabilities. Okay. Does it have it's auto a theodolite with a laser. Does it have <laughs> auto-level capabilities? Yes. Because you, you were like, you're giving it up. Do you not have to perform a two peg test every time you use a theodolite uh, total station? No, there's a different way to ensure the collimation of the uh, horizontal and vertical with the... Uh... The collimation? We're not, yeah. we're not talking about collimation, are we? Yes, we are. On, not with an auto. You don't, do you know what collimation means? Yeah, yeah. Um, with what an, does it mean? Not with what an auto, does it mean? Not with an auto level, though, George, right? With the total station, with the theodolite, what does collimation mean? It's like, What does it mean, George? I'm asking you. Yeah, I know. I heard you. What does it mean, George? I know what it means. I don't think you do, though. Okay. Well, Tell let's, me. Let's pretend nobody here... No, no there's let's just, pretend... There's just you here, George. Let's pretend you know, so describe it to me. Let's, what? Let's pretend, what let's pretend Sorry. you're the man, George, that's teaching us. No, you're, you're, you're just trying to weasel out of this because you don't know what it is. I don't. I, I, okay. I, I, like, George, you're the one teaching us. Please tell us all what collimation is with respect to an auto level. I'm waiting, Bev. What are you waiting for? 
for waiting for you. Tell me what collimation is. I've just said, George, nobody here has got a clue what collimation is. Please tell us what collimation is with respect well, Buster to knows, the auto level. But I think Buster knows. He uh, made a comment earlier that um, I helped him understand what collimation was. Okay. Please tell us what collimation is just, with respect to the auto I just stepped level. in. I just stepped in. Go ahead, George. What is collimation? Nothing. Uh, Nothing? Phase one, phase two. Come on, guys. Yeah, I know. We watched the video. Uh, but that's what I want to know with George. What With respect to the auto level, George. No? What? I'm tired of Bell. It sounds like it. Oh, man. I'm tired of playing these games with you. With when you don't know an answer, answer, you try to put it on somebody else. You this okay. is the game you play. I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me, George? Yeah, I hear you. What, what is collimation? I'm a, I'm a truck driver. So, What is collimation? <clears throat> Do you know? No, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm a truck driver. I don't survey. What is collimation? Ask Bill. He seems to be the no, man. I'm asking you. Oh, gosh. I don't know what it is either, George. So please, can you enlighten us? I've never heard it before in my life. I would like to know from George because he seems to know more about all this than me. I went through all this in one of the, I went through this in this uh, this server once before. I discussed Nobody's it in detail. Here. Yeah, there's obviously oh. people here that don't know George. Please, I wasn't here when you went through it before. Well, I've never heard that word before, and having to do with the auto level or Seattle. Like, I've been here all night through this conversation. I still don't know what collimation means. So please, George, can you um, enlighten us all? Well, why don't you go back to uh, Bev's old show where I discussed no, no, no. it? Why don't you tell us now, George? You're here. You're you're here now. We're listening. Come on. Can you tell what us you what collimation is with regards to an auto level, please? Simple explanation is that you're just aligning the crosshairs that are tied into the prism in the compensator to be aligned with horizontal or level at the point that you have it set up. That's it. You adjust it. You adjust the, the um, compensator adjustment screw to bring the crosshairs in alignment with true level at the um, uh, with, with the plumb or the pendulum that's uh, inside the auto level. You need the crosshairs to properly indicate your horizontal as established by the prism or the pendulum. Okay. Okay, George. So, George, wait, wait, what's wait. the compensator, please? Because I, I don't know what compensator is. Yeah, Pip, Pip put up a little diagram there showing you, you. The compensator is the pendulum prism. You might, you might want to take that, there. George, then you can show people next time when you're talking about it. No, I'm just saying that the pendulum prism floats freely inside the auto level housing. And then you have your objective screw? lens in the front and you have your um, eyepiece at the back that you look through. And then there's a little lens that's in between the pendulum uh, prism and the eyepiece that your crosshairs are etched into. And you need that to be aligned with the, 
the uh, light path that comes from the prism. All this stuff is mechanical, so they can get out of alignment. And so you need your horizontal crosshair to be centered with light beam that comes from your prism, pendulum prism that comes from the compensator. And there's a little adjustment screw right by the eyepiece that if you unscrew the housing, you have access to that screw and you can uh, move that screw clockwise or counterclockwise to get the crosshairs to line up with the light path uh, that's coming from the uh, prism, uh, the pendulum prism in the compensator. So it's not a screw on the compensator then? Because you can't really... No, you, you don't have access. Pendulum. You do not have access to the compensator. That's no. deep inside the outer level hole. You did just call it a compensator screw a bit earlier. Yes, it's not attached it's to the not, compensator. Oh, oh, no. Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's like calling it the lens brigade when it's, it's not that anyway. So the pendulum prism, is that free moving then? Yes. That's right, right. isn't it, George? I don't, I don't right. worry. So how does a compensator affect the pendulum prism then it doesn't the compensate the pendulum prism is part of the compensator mm -hmm. that it's floats the, freely the inside the auto level the auto isn't it that's the auto in the auto level yeah yeah that the prisms the prisms in the compensator are attached to the pendulum as the pendulum moves as it rotates it rotates the prism, so the light path changes. It gets tilted at an angle as the pendulum uh, moves back and forth. And once it's dampened out, and you have your auto level balanced or leveled properly, the pendulum basically is like, uh, you can think of it as being a plum that's uh, hanging vertically. And the prisms are attached to that pendulum. And when oh, the pendulum right. is at rest and rotating freely, you know that the pendulum prisms are aligned with horizontal or level at the housing of the other yeah. level. So now what you have How to do is make do? sure you have to make sure now it's that the crosshairs yeah. that are etched into the lenses that's between that compensator and between the eyepiece the are aligned in the light path so that it properly indicates where your horizontal or your level line is. It's so the there's a way by adjusting that little screw, you move it's the, the lenses around so that the light path the intersects the... the um, intersects the um, just a uh, crosshairs line. properly. Hmm. It's all mechanical. It's just a reticule, George. It's not etched into the lens. It's yes, it is. It's etched a into a lens. Reticule. It's etched into a lens. It's etched into a lens it that's between the... Like if you look at that drawing, oh, God. it's eyepiece lens, reticule, fixed... The reticule... Pendulum the reticule, prism, the reticule, yeah. see, you're, Beth, you're George such an is, idiot. Yeah, wow, I can't believe George, it. George, that's nice. Yes, that is nice. I mean, you're very maddening. The reticule is a piece of glass. It's a lens in which the, piece of plastic, the crosshairs the are etched edge. into. It's just a, a straight piece of plastic or something with lines on it, George. Huh. Well, it's a lens. It's a it's a glass it's an lens, not plastic lens. It says it there. Oh, There's a big God. arrow on it. It says I. No, lens. enjoy your evening, Bell. I'm out of here. Okay. Goodbye. Go and have get your cocoa. See you later. Yeah. Nice. Take Thanks care, Scott, George. He was, he was acting like he was yawning when he yeah. was Oh, Bev. why are you gonna be so up to sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> it's the way George likes it best, right? So yeah, that prism it is just a glass piece, and you know the the light hits that thing, comes straight through the uh, the light ray at the object lens, comes all the way through, and just hits the prism, gets bounced down to the pendulum, which is the auto bit, 
free floating with a couple of magnets to keep it stabilized and then it goes through the other fixed prism and then you look at the bit of glass at the end of the fixed prism and you look through the hair at the image on the end of that fixed prism it's pretty easy so the pendulum is inside the compensator. Well, I'm I'm not I've never used one, so I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's inside I'll, free, free moving. I'll, I'll do this right because this is mm. it, it takes a takes a bit for for some people to get. Damn! I thought George is gone. He's still here. No, he's listening. He, he's, oh, okay. He's listening Listen to bird for what he can get. Little bird, the bird. Oh, Redman, why do you got to be so obtuse all the time? Oh, you got me there, George. Damn. All right. Here we go. So this, I have to do this quite a few times, but I don't mind doing it. See, that's the eye looking through the end of a thing. Oh, we'd have the camera on there. But the only bit that you actually see and what you look at and everything that you're doing is within that red box. Because as you can see, the horizontal light ray comes through the focusing lens, hits that fixed prism, hits the pendulum prism, hits then, and then you see that end of the fixed prism. That's what you're looking at when you're looking through that thing. And you're only looking through the eyepiece and then you've got the hairs and then you've got that bit of glass with the um thing on it so Is all that... of your triangles and all of that with uh, with whatever you're doing within the stadia hairs and the horizontal it's all done within that like front two inches of the auto level oh i get it now yes I wasn't looking at the um, the diagram properly, but now yes, yeah, I get it. The rest of the is that the guy's uh, uh, eyebrow, or is that the top of his head? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a very bad haircut. <laughs> yeah. it's, just, it's just a line. All right, no need to get overboard on it. It's a globe. <laughs> it's, it's a line. Shit. It? And it's, it's actually to level. the. Um, Okay, I'm an admin of this server, and while George is here, we can't be fucking saying globe and shit like that. But you always subtract your backside <laughs> from your foresight. Yeah. RBD face. Wait. RBD face. Always. Always. Never changes. Always the same. Never changes. It's the other way around. You subtract your foresight from the backside. Oh, RBD George, face. why do you gotta be so equilateral all the time? What if you do so it? In, what if you do it in a triangle? What if you go one A, two A, and then three A meets back at one A? Huh? Ballers, what? Ballers Canal, the one uh, A, two A, three A. Internal. You could have meet as a mile equilateral. That shit. Could even have your angles, couldn't you? It would be uh, 60, 60, 60, wouldn't it? Yeah. Damn. Who's moving their house out? It's George. He's got his keyboard. Oh, he's got a keyboard. Yeah. Okay. He said he was gone. Internal mic on his keyboard. Sounds cool. No, it sounds bad. Yeah. I got to keep it 100. I like to think that what he'd done is he hadn't got a keyboard, but he's got a load of wire and he hooks up cupboards and drawers to different, <laughs> different buttons on his keyboard. So he can just slam doors and open drawers. Oh, like a soundboard? Mm-hmm. Huh. Didn't think of that one. His delete button was the kitchen cupboard. Yeah, he's probably got string and uh, little pulley wheels. <laughs> yeah. Pedals. He's ingenious like that. Uh, 
um, is there any chance that the uh, dear departed moment silence mm, Jesse and Jeff are going to come back, George? Or have they, uh, have they ditched those characters? Will he come back with new ones? What do you mean, come back? You mean uh, come to uh, talk to you guys? Cool. Well, no, no, no. Just, just to help the uh, Globers out a bit because they seem to be a bit stuck with this level horizontal and, and curvature thing. You're struggling, we know. Are you, are you not going to get any help? None of us are struggling. You seem to be the one that's struggling here, Bill. Sean G. No. Sean G got rid of the hump the other week. I mean, yep. Walter Bislin modelled it as a hump. You know, Lake Poncha train, but Sean said there's no chance it's a hump. How can it no, possibly be? There isn't be any hump? hump, everything's level. We See, we're, we're getting there. There's no <laughs> hump, right? He just said it. Yeah. So if there's, if there's no hump and it's always drop, do your 1A, 2A, 3A in a triangle. The thing is, is you're confusing what drop is. Drop is. When we turn, use the term drop, we mean from a tangent line that's drawn from one position. No, we, we, no. we mean drop. Like, it's quite obvious what drop is. You know, drop in this sense and describing earth curvature is not like drop on a hill. Please describe what you mean by earth curvature, George. Do you mean elevation changes? No. Right, so what do you mean by earth curvature if you do not mean elevation changes please explain okay okay think of it this way take a soccer ball okay now from the point in the center of the socket ball to every point on the surface is the same distance right from the center this is earth curvature you're talking about it's like the stitching well, you agree with football. that on a soccer ball or a sphere, if you go from the center to any point on the surface, that distance is the same. That's what we call the radius of the sphere or the radius of the ball. Uh, yeah, right. I know what a radius is. Yep. Wait, wait. A lot of stitching on a soccer I... ball. Oh, no, Jesus okay. Christ. You know what a sphere is. Don't confuse him. No, no, no. Oh, no sorry. Oh, he's talking fuck. about earth curve on a soccer ball. So, I mean, like, let him go. I mean... We all know what a soccer ball is. Uh, see, that's a part. You, you guys get so caught up in all these word games and minutia. Just I said I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. Jesus, there's stitches on the soccer ball, man. Yeah, man. stupid. Jesus I mean, imagine Christ. thinking an earth curve couldn't be displayed on a soccer ball. <sighs> Fuck. E equidistant from a center. Go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we know. We all know what a radius is. George. All right. So every point on the sphere is at the same elevation. Elevation is basically no, no. measured. No, no. Yes, it is. No, the radius is always elevation. The elevation is the distance from the center. No, it's not. no that's the radius. And that's elevation. That's no, how no elevation, elevation is measured on a sphere. Nobody says that. What's the elevation? Yes, they do. Of the Everybody point? says that. Anybody that knows anything soccer about ball. spheres. What's the elevation ball. of that f soccer ball? The radius would go up to a mountain then if that was the case. So what? The radius isn't the same as elevation or else the radius would go up into the mountain. The and... elevation on the surface, yes. You can go and extend your radial line to get elevation. That's what I was going to get to next. But Bev kept interrupting. The thing is, is uh, elevation uh, is measured from interrupted that, really ele one. elevation is measured from the center of the sphere. If that the was center true. of the sphere to the surface is what we call a radius. That is, the radius is points on the sphere that are all at the same elevation. Now, if you want to measure to points above the surface, like on a mountain or the top of a person's head or whatever, you it's extend it, that radial it, line to get George, what the elevation is. Nice elevation is all. measured with cool. respect to the center. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, Bev. Can't you ever shut up for once? Well, I just noticed My that God. little slip that you did Question. where you were talking about a football 
And then you said a mountain. I don't know if it's because Sugar Cookie gave you that out before, but you were talking about a football and a radius of a football, and then you slipped in a mountain. I did not slip in anything. I was just answering the question put to me is, what is what elevation is? on a mountain? No, elevation don't you, of don't you mountains listen, is measured you by differential leveling, right? Aren't you listening, though? Ask. I was listening. Yeah, yeah. So when you said it with a radius, you start in the center, right? Yes. All right. Who started in the center to get the outside of the rest of the radius? Huh? What? I said who started in the center to get the rest of the outside of the radius? Outside I know it's a dumb radius. question. How did you measure yeah, yeah, yeah. it, I think, is what he means. How did you measure that? Radius? The center. Yeah. What do you mean, how do you measure the center? How the center did is you a definition. measure the radius, George? How do you measure the radius of a football, for starters? Take the circumference and divide by uh, 2 pi. Wow. What, what about Mount Everest? Is it the tallest mountain because it's measured from mean sea level? I would expect so. I don't know for sure, but that would be a good guess. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm trying to go back to the start. The start of knowing the radius. Who measured from the center to the surface, you know? Radius is a definition. Just like circumference, if you if you can't measure the radius directly, you measure it indirectly. Most measurements we make are indirect measurements, never direct measurements. You so can't the measure. What's the difference between you cannot measure. You cannot measure. You cannot. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! Jesus. George, will you stop swearing, please? Or you quit interrupting. I, I just asked, I, I just asked about the center portion. That's all I was asking. Mm -hmm. Who who went to the center, and then, you know, measure it from there. He can't measure it R. Everyone knows that no one can measure R. That's right. You can't it, judge. You can't. You can't measure it directly. You can measure it indirectly. There's any number of methods that you can get what the radius is indirectly. It. You mean you what, can wait, calculate what? something? No, you don't calculate. You measure it indirectly. You take the circumference, and the circumference is directly related to the radius by a constant. The constant is 2 pi. You double the radius, you double the circumference. You half the radius, you half the circumference. They're directly related. They go one and one. Yeah. No. No, no, wait, 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 wait. So if, if it hadn't been measured, so you can't do been. anything across... No, oh, there's no assumption, Jesus. Okay, so who's been to the center? It's an indirect measurement, just like you. most measurements what, what you is, make are indirect. He means calculation. When he says that, he means calculation. Okay, cool. Calculated from what? Well, he keeps going circumference, but he's never measured that either. So, I mean, he's just making that yeah. up. Geodetic surveyors have. Up to the next. I haven't made it up. I haven't done it personally, but geodetic surveyors have. Measured the circumference? Yes. How did they it's do that? It's been done that? several times. How did they do that, George? By going over the surface of the earth. You got a, you got a man that I can uh, check up on and see how he did it? Yeah, just look up geodetic surveying. Look up uh, the great, uh, I forgot what it was called, the great. No, Indian you should have a great survey. man. Huh? Great name. A great name. What do you mean, Not great George. name? Great name, George. George Washington. Uh, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Columbus. You, uh, I mean. Are you sober? No, there's no, there's nobody that's measured the circumference. That's what, either, that's what I wanted. Right, George? No, the circumference has been measured it's several how, times. How, George? The British have done it. How, George? By doing geodetic surveys over the how, surface of the how, earth. 
How? I just told you. No, you didn't. How did Geodetic they do surveyors. it? Geodetic surveyors. You can't measure it, George. It cannot be done. It's never yes, it been can. done. It's not. Really? Yeah, really. Really. Huh. really. Interesting. You have, a, you have a really bad understanding of what a measurement is and a really bad understanding of knowing what can be done and what cannot be done. Yeah. yeah. Very good, Bev. Okay. How do you get the geodetic like uh, measurement of Earth if n none of the land masses, like all of the land masses, aren't connected? I just had me a couple questions. That's all. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of my night. Are you just going to uh, keep quiet to the questions that you can't answer, George? And they said, Booyah! <laughs> Booyah! I like it. <laughs> the Saints are uh, beating the <laughs> Patriots. Yes! Hold on now. Buccaneers, sorry. <laughs> Oh yeah, okay, cool, cool. I'm um, I'm interested in the question that's still on the table for George. Mm. This geodetic wow. surveying that's apparently been done to measure the circumference when none of the land masses are connected. How did they do it, George? He doesn't know. It's like the radius thing. They all claim it and then get really stuck when we say it, it can't be done. It's impossible. It's always claimed, never actually been done, George. There's not even any method you could tell us how they did it. Because you, I think you know real deep down that they haven't done it. I'm sure if he did know, he would tell us. Yeah. Well, he's keeping it quiet, obviously. I reckon it's code 33. <laughs> I reckon they're and holding secrets. <sighs> Is the new code for um, it's not going out live though, George? So nobody, I don't think anybody can hear. Nobody to signal you out, you, you call to. Nice of you being here and hanging out with us though. You should do it more, George. Maybe then we can go over some of the stuff that um, we've got. Did you hear Sean G and that one? Because we're going through it now. The video, the one with you're in as well. You come in at the late part three. Three, two, one. You said some stupid shit as well, George, you know. There is no hop. I bet if we go over this one tonight as well, there'll be a bit more. Remember that one that time when you said that uh, people that aren't surveyors and aren't practice surveyors have got no chance of measuring the curvature? You're not a surveyor, are you, George? Well, I'm bailing now, but uh, George, thanks for coming over and educating me. Later. Yeah, see you Bye, Warden Cliff. Right, see, you. see you later, Warden. Later on. Mr. Sensible. <laughs> Our very own Mr. Sensible. <laughs> Depends on which uh, perspective you have. Yeah. <laughs> Is it now? Oh, come on, George. There's a question on the table. It's hard work with measurements, you know, like when, can you remember when we first got together, DP, and we did that, you did that uh, measurements or calculations? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking one of the earliest ones, and it's still bang on, isn't it, right? Oh, absolutely. The, that's the Logos, right? Do you one measure reality or calculate a fantasy? Yeah, yeah. The competition, you can get to it. Oh, I found it. I think George is busy calculating his fantasy. There you go. 
Yeah. Here you go. There's the original. Sugar cookie, that's all wrong. How dare you? <laughs> if they did that, then Mount if they did that, then Mount Everest wouldn't be the tallest mountain, so you just add 3959 miles to everything. Yeah, that's that if you did that then Mount Everest wouldn't be the tallest mountain. And and the thing is he's working out a constant radius based on a sphere, but I thought they lived on a geoid which wouldn't have a constant radius. Yeah, they think they live. Uh -oh. Well, I don't even know whether they think they live on anything. <laughs> Other than what NASA give him. I, I'm not too sure. I think we all think that we live in reality. Surveyors do it all the time. Yeah, and we all think we're living. too small to see anything. And you can't actually see any curvature anywhere ever. It's just some people imagine they can uh, measure it. Which is good. Good that there are people like George imagining that they can measure it. Uh, subtracting the back sight from your foresight every time. Yeah, we'll have to go over that. We'll have to get our little books out. With the little backside and foresight column. I'm interested in doing that um, triangle, Bev, next time I come up to you. The water level? No, no, no. The surveying triangle, like Buster was saying. Mm -hmm. you, could Instead do it with of... a, you could do it with a water level also. Uh huh, yeah. Oh, you mean like peg it out? Uh huh. Okay, yeah, we could do that. Could see how good you are. I mean, you have to, what you have to remember is that we're on the beach. So I was gonna, I was going to say you got to do so, RBD face when you do the triangle. Yeah. It does look a bit different, doesn't it? I'm on the same mission as you, DP. Trying to get get a drone to fly. <laughs> Herbed face. Herbed face. Get a beat going to that. Uh oh. There you go, like that. You gotta change the you gotta change the letters to R B D. See if I can get this plugged in, see if I can get some lights. I think George is falling asleep. Is Pondering that super fishies? Pondering yeah. off his question. Yeah, super fishies. And Emilo. Oh, bitch. Get out of here. Emma's not fond of the Emilo, though. We don't care what Emma thinks. Well, we do need a new <laughs> mascot for Emma. She needs a. She's not happy with her. Emilo. I wanted to get an angry Emilo, but she doesn't want to give us a, a portrait shot of her snarl in her face. <laughs> Which I can't understand why, because a snarling face Emilo would be cool. <laughs> yeah, it would. A little bit of a highbrow. Yeah. One side. Let's see what this is. No lights. You still awake, George? The RBD Melo.
Oh, DP. Why are you going to be so monkey some bitch all the time? It is what it is. <clears throat> hey, uh, Bev, have you ever read the manual on your other level? Hang on, George. There's a question on the table for you. Do you want to address that one first? What's the question? Really? Yeah, you I haven't been listening. Uh-huh. Buster, do you want to go again? Say so what? Yes. Um, if you were to do 1A, 2A, 3A in a triangle, would the formula still work? In a triangle? What do you mean? Yeah, so, so if you did 1A and 2A, and then from 3A back to 1A. Okay. Sorry. To do what? To level? You mean? No, oh, your differential leveling that you said you it would work. But if you did it from 1A, turn 60 degrees, 2A, turn 60 degrees, 3A, turn 60 degrees back to 1A, would the formula still work out? Yeah. Yes. It's always going to work if you're leveling. Uh, just saying yes is not quite sufficient? Well, that was a question. You asked me, would it work out? I said yes. What more could do you, you expect? Uh, I mean, could you show it <laughs> working out? Well, work through the numbers yourself. Go and do it. Do you have an auto it. level? Do you have a staff? Google it. Do you have a staff? Do you have an auto level in which you can... Uh, Play you with don't, you don't need a staff, do you? Or do we need a staff now? I, I'm glad that we do. I'm glad we've come round to that. Well, if you're going to read the numbers off and do a backsight and foresight to read your polls, you mean sure. like a measuring rod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're people call it different well. things measuring rod, staff, pole, rod, Philly pole, yeah. all names for the same thing, but it's Range necessary, pole. right. Well, if you're doing leveling. Yeah. Which is what you do with an auto level, right? And there's well, not, that's not, not the many only other thing uses of an auto level, is there? Oh, well, yeah. With your auto level, you can measure distances. Stadiometric range finding. Yeah. That's just an estimation, though, right? That's why they call it range. It's not a distance measurement, it's a range finder. George, you know that. Range, distance, same thing. No, no, it's not. <laughs> like this it is distance from the auto level. Distance from the auto level to your range pole. Range pole? Yeah, that you're going to read. <laughs> off your, the you use your stadium rod. marks. You're yeah, going to use your stadium rod. marks on the auto right level to, range you, to read your range yeah. pole. Yeah. Yeah. Measuring rod, range pole, whatever. Yeah, your measuring rod's vital for that, though, right? It's even more important for that. Well, yeah, you have to know what the vertical height is. So can you think of any other marks. reasons to use an auto level that don't require the measuring rod being a vital part of the, uh, I call it a trifle. Auto level. Maybe even four people, but. What do you reckon, George? So what? It's vital, right? What is vital? The measuring rod. Measuring? Is what? The measuring, measuring is rod, vital. George. Oh, so the measuring rod late, is so vital. Late. Yeah. What? Who? I don't know. It seems like your audio is cutting in and out, Bev. I'm not getting are, complete sentences. You are clipping a bit, Bev. <laughs> measuring rod what he said uh, obviously George can't the conversation that we're having because that is what we were talking about so please George answer the question what's the question would you not say that the measuring rod is a vital part of the equipment of an auto level Well, if you want to do leveling, proper leveling over uh, uneven terrain, yeah. And what else would you use an auto level for, George? 
like I said, you could use it for uh, measuring distances. You can also use it Which for measuring you also horizontal need angles to uh, probably horizontal. within a few tenths of a degree. Oh, it, the wow. water levels don't measure angles, do they, George? Horizontally, you can. The base is calibrated in degrees. It's not calibrated, George. Yes, it is. Look at your auto level. The base has dials on it. Yes, very crude. Yes, it's crude, but you can measure angles. I didn't say that you're going to measure it to a high degree of accuracy, but you can get a pretty good estimate of certain horizontal angles. Of course, it's not going to be as good as a, a precision theodolite that can measure down to arc what seconds. Do you but use you can use an auto level for measuring horizontal angles, George. Depends on upon what your application is. For any application, if you required a horizontal angle to be measured, would you use an auto level for that, George? Well, if I don't need a high degree of precision, I've used it for that. I've used it for uh, uh, measuring and closing triangles. You can do it pretty well using the auto level. Measuring and closing triangles. Oh, wait a minute. If you were to do your your version of the differential leveling, leveling in a triangle, you would always measure up, no matter what. So instead of measuring down, you just always measure up. Huh? Well, why is that even if you turn around, Buster? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, so like if you did it in a 1A, 2A, 3A in a triangle, you just always measure up to your, from your foresight to your backside. You just keep measuring up, measuring up, measuring up, measuring up. Well, that's not always going to be the case. Depends on the terrain you're on. If you're on hilly terrain, sometimes you'll be measuring up, sometimes you'll be measuring down. Depends wow. upon Changes where the uh, rod is, That's uh, what I whether it's on a hill you. or in a depression. <laughs> I asked you earlier today if you would have to change the equation because we've got you RVD, don't have to no. e. again you don't have to as long as you subtract the four sites from the back sites you don't have to change anything well you'd, you'd always be measuring up you know you'd always you're from no your you don't step. have to no. you know it's I just happened to show it on that diagram but you in some cases you can be your your foresight your backsight can be higher than your for previous foresight, or it could be the other way around. It could be a mixture of them. It doesn't matter. It's the difference between the levels, right? The differential leveling. It's the, just the difference in between the levels whenever you reset your level up. Yeah. You measure the difference between the last one yeah. and the new that's what, one. That's basically what you're doing is you're just... Uh, you Established by reading the pole, by reading, those. by reading a back sight mm -hmm. on your new setup, and comparing it to the previous foresight. All you're doing is uh, getting what the uh, height difference is between the uh, back sight and the foresight. And it doesn't matter if if the previous foresight is lower than the new back sight. It's just you'll get a positive though, number. It? If the Jesus cap, can't you shut your mouth just for? 10 you, seconds? You never stop monologuing, Fucking Christ, George. you're annoying shit. My God. You never stop. So you establish yeah, one fucking... horizontal, and at one end, you get a point on a staff, and you are then st establishing a new horizontal and marking the difference between the two levels, the two horizontal levels. And you are just marking... The difference between them. That's it. Differential leveling. Very simple, George. Two horizontals and a difference between them. Now, those horizontals are parallel. It's amazing. I know. Fantastic. No, they're not parallel. They have to be, George. You're violating. Well, they the don't law have not, to be. You're, you're violating no. the law of non-contradiction if they're not parallel. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> well, that woke you up a bit, George, right? <laughs> so do that for breakfast. Yeah. 
I've tried to describe a test for you and Buster to do, but you've refused to listen. And you could determine very easily whether or not your horizontals are vertical, or I mean parallel or uh, not parallel. It's very easy to test. Horizontals are never vertical, are they, George? Oh, Jesus, Bill. They aren't, though, are they, George? Horizontals never uh, are vertical. That would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? Anybody that said that would be... Why do you even say stupid things like this? Bill? You were the one that said it. Like, I yeah. misspoke. I corrected myself. I know. Jesus. I was just confirming with you that it was a oh, misspeak God. and that never happens, right? <laughs> a horizontal could never be the same as a vertical, could it? Because they're always perpendicular to each other. Very good, Bill. You must be reading Euclid. Uh, they're just perpendicular. I understand the basics of geometry, right, George? Very good, Bill. You get a star. But you know that horizontal and vertical are perpendicular, aren't they? Always. Oh, my. Boy, you're a wizard. You are so quick at this stuff, Bev. It's amazing. I know. It's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, why is it's, it the, why, why it's is it the only one getting patronizing awesome. here is you, George? Is it time to be condescending and yeah, yeah. Now, George? I mean, you running out of steam here? Yeah, I think he is. It was Buster Your computer malfunction. Contradiction that made him click it, I think. We've been nothing but cordial and polite to you, George, and you just come in with the the crap. Called him an idiot earlier. Well, he's the one y'all like. Pathetic, George. Man of your age. So anyway, George, can we go back to this um, geodetic survey that apparently happened to measure the circumference? Have you pondered up an answer yet? How did they do it when the land masses aren't connected? Was the question. Or did they just survey across the land and then guess the rest? How would you face? I'm, I'm really interested to find out how they did it, George. RBD no. boat face. Boat face. <laughs> boat face. <laughs> it's a boat face liar. I just wonder why I got laughed at when I said that the if horizontals aren't intersecting it's a law it violates the law of non not law of non contradiction because George doesn't understand geometry obviously yeah there's got to be a a law of um, what's that other one what's the new one stolen concept stolen, yeah stolen concept uh, fallacy somewhere in there somewhere can't use straight lines to say that straight lines are bent. Well, in fact, it's a you can't use straight lines to say that um, straight lines don't exist. Rather, well, certain straight lines, perpendiculars. Horizontal doesn't have a perpendicular apparently. If you live on a model, Is that right, George? Horizontals only exist on your model along the vertical at the point. That's what I've heard. Is that right, George? Or have you not looked that far into the uh, geometric problems that you've got?
Feed that cat. <laughs> <laughs> the next door's dog. It's usually when it thinks we're going live, it starts acting up, right? That's what it usually <laughs> This is it's a show cat. Hard for George in here with no backup. Though. So what's happening, guys? Did we get anywhere with uh, the presentation? Uh, I missed most of it. Did George come in with a breakthrough or? I think exposed a lack of understanding would be a better way of phrasing it. George, not understand? Come on. Did you ever consider, DP, perhaps that it was you that didn't understand? Mm. I've, I've considered... Um, <clears throat> I think I, I pretty yeah, much understand, understand geometry. George, George I'm just busting your cup. George, hey, George. You got an answer yet, George? So what? The question that you've been asked about four times now. Oh, I didn't hear any question. I was uh, letting Con outside. Can you <laughs> can you stay around for it now, and then perhaps okay. we might What's we might question? get an, we might get an answer from you. What's your question? You claim. The circumference has been measured geodetically. Now, did they do that when none of the land masses are connected? Did you hear it that time? Yeah, you don't. You don't have to do it in a straight line around uh, a, in a tall straight line. So you're taking a wavy <laughs> path to measure a straight line distance i mean and what is your problem with that <laughs> the earth has been uh Pretty extensively surveyed geodetically. Mm, how did they do that across the water, though, George? This is the question. I didn't say they did it on the water, on the land. The land, yeah, yeah, the land. So we know that the land has been surveyed because we know how that's done. Differential leveling, right? For measuring elevation changes. Yeah, I don't know how it is over there in Europe, but uh, you can find uh, these geodetic markers uh, all over the United States. In fact, uh, just here in this community, I know where there's uh, at least five of them, and I know there's more than that. Mm. There's one every 200 meters down the side of the canal that Rumpus is doing, you know. Did you know? No, I was not aware of that. Like I say, is I don't know how they, um, how you guys over in Europe, um, you know, uh, set up your markers or uh, designate them. Here they uh, generally uh, uh, have uh, brass markers um, 
embedded into uh, concrete in the ground. Yep, very much the same here, George. But I uh, just been reading about your auto level and if you're trying to set up staffs no more than 50 meters apart, then it doesn't look very hopeful that you would be able to measure uh, the curve of the earth using your uh, auto level. We can measure elevation with the auto level, George, and we can show people how that works. Now, we know we cannot measure a curvature to level. Because we know level is horizontal and there is no curvature to that. Well, actually it is. On, on the Earth, uh, level is curved and that is the problem. When you're doing differential leveling, you cannot tell whether you're on a flat Earth or a curved Earth because you're maintaining constant elevation. Constant elevation on a flat plane is all par or, um, can be connected with a straight line segment, whereas constant elevation on the Earth follows the curve of the earth and so it it's basically would be uh if you connected all the points of equal elevation at various points you'd get a, a curved surface that would be uh basically uh like the uh surface of the line, sphere. Though, george level is horizontal no it isn't You've been down. I, I'm not going to get down, yes, go down that road with you. I've heard that a hundred different times from you, and I there, there's just no point having that discussion, Bev, because that's your belief. Yeah, I'm not you, going to try to change a, it. You have a belief. I have a knowledge, George. You have a no. Belief. You don't have any knowledge. You have the beliefs. level is a circle, but it's not. Yes, it is. It's, it's not. Level is... On a sphere, it is. On a spherical mass, on a spherical mass, level is a circle that's parallel to the surface. Nice fantasy, George. Yep. Parallel straight lines, George. Nope. Circles <laughs> are not... And unfortunately, lines. your auto level will not does not have the degree of resolution needed in order to do a test. It's not over doing 50 a meters. test. It's an auto level, George. It establishes horizontal, so you can yes, use and you can use those horizontals. A place of yes. reference to measure from. That's correct, That's Bev. It, but yes, but as you move the auto level, your horizontals will change. But over fifty meters, they're not going to change enough for you to be able to detect it with your auto level. That's the problem. So it's a straight line. No, so it's not a straight. Little... Well, as far as your auto level is the concerned, line, yeah, it appears as a straight, as a straight line, line because your auto level doesn't line. have That's the accuracy it, in order it to differentiate. It appears as a straight line, George, because it is a straight line. No, it appears as a straight line because it's within the error of your auto level. Your auto level isn't a isn't a exact piece of equipment. It has a resolution limitation, and the curvature is within that resolution. So you can't see it. It gets swamped out by the it's errors of your level. to a horizontal, George. No, no, well, see, you really need to study your instrument more and what the specifications mean because you're just fooling yourself into thinking that everything's horizontal because you cannot register the curvature or how much changes there are due to the curvature because of the resolution of your auto level. There's no curvature to a horizontal, George. I didn't say there was. Well, uh, since an auto level establishes a horizontal plane of reference, then there's no curvature to that. That's right. At each setup, but the minute you, the instant you move your auto level to a new position, you establish a new horizontal, and those horizontals are straight. not parallel. They're, they're all straight, right? Yeah, they're straight, but they're not inter. But they're not parallel. They inter. They would intersect because of the fact that the compensator readjusts itself every time you change the position the of the auto level. intersect, George. Have you heard what you're saying? Yeah, it's not the same horizontal. Why are you saying that? Because they're not the same horizontal. Your horizontals are only specific intersect, to... A, George. 
your horizontals are local to the position in which you have your auto level set up. That's the horizontals issue. Horizontals do not intersect, George. Well, actually, they do. Wow. Mm -hmm. Horizontals established at, just as at a given position do not intersect. They would be parallel. But the problem is, is you've moved your auto level. And when you move your auto level, you establish a new horizontal, which is not the same as the previous horizontal. Who's told you that, George? It's obvious. It's <laughs> obvious who's told you that. Who, who told you that, George? It's not obvious to me who's told you that. That's why I asked you. It Nobody's sounds, told me that. Sounds I can see that. George. Well, it might sound ridiculous, but it's a matter of fact. You do realise our two-peg test is done, right? Horizontals do not intersect, do they? Oh, Bev. I've got some logic for you, George. You said that. According to your manual, how do they recommend you do the two peg test? How do what they should be the diffs? Yeah, what they, they have. A test in there for doing your two peg test and they tell you how far to put your staffs apart how how far do they tell you to put the staffs apart oh, i don't know 50 meters no 30 Six, 60 meters 30. all right 30 meters then all right so you are levels in the middle it's in 15 meters away from each peg how how far do you put yours apart when you're doing the two peg test judge i change depends on the for what does, um, you, what does your manual say? My manual is typically around uh, 60 meters. All right. So do you do 60 meters then? I do various. Uh, right, right. So you don't always go with what the manual says then, right? But I'm saying That's good to know. You, you obviously don't even know in what fact, your own auto you, level You forgot is before. Saying. Can you remember when you said you don't use your auto level and you don't actually know how to do a two peg test? I have did you, not you, say that. Have you just Jesus, I said, no, 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 I did no, not no, say no, that. I did not say that. I said I no longer use the auto level. I used it for years before I got yeah. the, uh, the auto level. You said about us not doing the two peg test every time. Does it advise in the manual that you do your two peg test every, first thing every time you get your auto level out? No. Does it not? No. Oh. When does it? As say, long as you don't bang when, it around, as long as you're not rough, as long as you don't, as long as you don't, as long as you don't, as long as you don't rough handle your auto level, it will generally it will stay in calibration for a long time as long as you don't when rough does it, it say that you should use the auto level um and to perform the two peg test judge if you've had rough handling of it all right is that the only time you should do it It's when you might want to, uh, for sure, check yourself. But I typically check myself about every two weeks. When, but you don't use an auto level. When I did, years ago, when I used the auto level, I still use it, but not on a regular basis, not like the, uh, the Adelaide. I'll, I'll set both of the Adelaide and the auto level up uh, periodically to check one another. Right, so if you've not used it for a while then would you not get it out and then perform a two peg test just to make sure it works properly? Sure. Right. Would you not do that every time just to make sure it's working properly? I don't have to do a two peg test each time because I can collimate my theodolite, cite the horizontal with it, and then put the auto level on to the tribeck and uh, see if it's shooting the same horizontal. I can check it against the theodolite. Would you not just do a two peg test to make sure that your auto levels working properly? Not every time because it takes a it's a real pain in the ass to do it. 
I don't know, DP's here. How long, DP? Sorry, I wasn't listening to George. I just zoned I can out. check. I can just check the other one. What was the, the question? The 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 How long the did you say, DP, it takes... Five... I can call a mate up to the Adelaide in five so, minutes and so check the auto level what against it. Yeah, just keep talking, proceed. George. It doesn't matter. It was all right. It was only asking DP. Go George, on, George seems to think that a uh, two-peg test is a lengthy process. How long would you say it takes? Um, my first one took about 10 minutes. Mm, there you go. 15, maybe. First one, George. And I was... Within a millimetre, George. First two pegs. Millimetre over what distance? Mm, it was about 25 metres, I think. 30 metres, something like that. Nah, it was further than that, the first one. Now, was it further? Yeah. But does it really matter? Well, well over, yeah, just tell me, what, over what distance? Over what distance? George, does it matter? Yes, it does. It yes, is? it does. You said you were within one millimeter over what distance? The distance we did the two peg test. Yes. Yes. I'm asking you, what is the distance? The distance that we did the two peg test over, George. Yes. What is that distance? That was the distance that we used. Oh, my God, Bill. How, how obtuse can you be? I'm asking you, give me the number for we, that distance. How George, many meters? George. We didn't do that. Because you don't, do you? Yes. The shorter well, distance you like, use, the more inaccurate. You, you know, when you did your drawings earlier and you had 1A, 2A and 3A, and you didn't put a distance between I them told you. I all. told you at the beginning what the distance was. Well, no, listen, I'm telling you now that you didn't put anything on that drawing, right? So we didn't put anything. We don't do that. You don't do a distance for the two yes, you peg do. test. You yes, you do. Two yes, pegs you do. in on the floor, don't you, George? You have to know you the distance in order to know the accuracy. Bev, in Bev, the floor, over what George. distance? Bev, over what George, distance? You put the two pegs in the floor and move the auto level from the middle to the side. Right? You've got you it there. Right? You've got it there, Rogan, in front Bev, of you, George. EP told me 25 meters. Road Bev, there. Bev. Bev, EP just told me he was George, in within George, one millimeter George. and 25 did, meters. That means ask him, he has ask an him. uncertainty George, of George, 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 ask him. Seconds. George, That's ask him how accurate. did he measure it, George. Ask him That's how did he measure it, George. George, George ask him how did he measure it, Not very accurate. Not very accurate. One millimeter and 25 meters is uh, a sloppy eight arc seconds. That's horrible. A sloppy eight. That's horrible. Eight, DP. Yeah. Ask me. Ask me how how it got measured, George. You're the one that just told me you it were within one millimeter and twenty five meters. Guess. That means that you're worse than eight arc seconds George. in the accuracy of your auto level. That's horrible. Yeah, yeah you it should have been more estimation. accurate than one mil, DP. You should have gone to like a point something of a mil. You know, like like we do, George. Right? Uh, is that how accurate he should have been? What point? Point what of a what? Would, how accurate would you have been, George? You when you do your pe two peg test over twenty five meters, I would have been well within a tenth of a millimeter if I could have done that. At that. Yeah, with an auto how level. Would, how would you measure that on the road? You don't use a measuring rod to do that. You use your own targets. The best way to get a very targets. thin line to sight. You need to get a, a, a target where you have a line. My my targets, my the graduations on my target are on the order of a hundredth of an inch that I use for doing the... A um, hundredth of an inch? Yes, hundredth, point zero one inch, yes, for I doing close in work you at 25. You can read that, can you? Yeah, at 25 meters you can. With your auto level? Yes, 32x. Do you have a micrometer on it? Oh, God. 
Is that a, oh, oh, I don't know what that is. Quick, Google it. Is that somebody, micrometer on auto level, check it. A hundredth of an inch is a quarter of a millimeter. Yeah, and you can measure that with your auto level, can you, George? You don't measure it. You look to see where you are on the graduations. Yeah. And you if can you're, measure if that. You're two, you... If you're two graduations, if you're two, three graduations above horizontal, then mm. you're three quarters of a millimeter above. How you well, don't uh... measure it with the auto level. You, you count how many graduations you are. And knowing the distance between the graduations, you know how much in the vertical you are. You don't measure it directly with the auto level. You see where the auto level is sighting it, and you count the graduation. So you know physically mm. how far off you are by knowing how many graduations and what the so graduation scale is. So you're not measuring at all, are you, George? No. Jesus, Bill. You measure it, not... right, George? Not taking a the measurement there, not at all. Counting, that's what you're doing. You're counting. Yeah, you look through the counting. eyepiece and you counting see how many graduations numbers. off you are. Yeah, that's you, all. That's like measuring, right? You would do the same with a ruler. You put the ruler up the side of something and you would count the numbers, wouldn't you? One, yeah, two, of course. Until you get to the bit that you want, and then you would call that a measurement, wouldn't you? Okay, it's a measurement, fine. Yeah. So can you do that with your auto level? I you just can, said I did. You can oh, measure to Bill, a quarter Bill, do of you, a millimeter. Do you, have, do you have problems with memory, Bob? It sounds like you, you seem have to have short-term memory issues. Yeah. George, can you pack it in with being childish again, please? It's, it's okay. It's, it's okay. The people get like this, you know. We, we know what it's like. Model afflicted. Right, George? Battling, battling cog this. Yeah. It's one of the defense mechanisms. At 25 meters, you can read a quarter you, of a millimeter using a 32X auto level. Have you got a micrometer on that auto level. auto level, George? Is what? Have you got a micrometer on that auto level, George? No, I do not. I don't need one. So you can't measure to the quarter millimetre with it, can you? Of course I can. No, you can't, George. A quarter of a millimetre at 25 metres is one arc second. That's fully within the capability of the auto level. What, how big's your crosshair? That's going to be enormous at 25 metres. It's the same at any distance. Yeah, so how at the big, other level, how you have a scissor you wedge on, on, on the other level, you have a scissor wedge on the right-hand side. You can sight. How Even though the crosshair cross might cover hair. up your mark, you can center it up using the scissor wedge. So if you've got a scissor wedge on your auto level, George? Yes, look at the uh, Popcorn ATG2. It has a scissor wedge. I'm just going off all of the pictures that you've given us in the past, George. You, I, I don't think I've ever seen any with a scissor wedge on it. It's because I have centered it's, it off into the center. Okay, the scissor okay. wedge is off to the side. You never see it in my images because I'm oh, zoomed in, and the field of view is George. so narrow, it's you so cannot stupid. see the scissor wedge. It's on the vertical. No, it's As on the you horizontal. Well know it is. It it's on the horizontal. The scissor meets at the vertical. No, it doesn't. At the left hand the side. The scissor wedge is on the horizontal. Which meets at the fucking vertical, George. That's where the scissor is. No, right. it isn't. No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. It is. Not on the it not is. on the top it con is. G2. It is. it is. Not on the it top is. con G2. It is. The scissor it is. wedge. It is. It is. Oh Jesus! Yeah. All right, you want to behave like a kid. It is. I'll catch you later. Bye. See you later. Coming from you, George. See, you. See you, George. Bye bye. Have fun. Are you going to stick nope. around? No, he's actually no, gone. He's gone.
Oh, man. If you enjoyed the content, please support On The Level and future projects. Membership subscriptions available now. Or come and get involved at Next Level Discord server. Thank you.